kind of looks like we're live. So uh, welcome to Small YouTubers Boost YouTube channel. I'm here today doing channel reviews and possibly little mini tutorials trying to answer your questions about YouTube, tube buddy talency, whatever I can um, that can help small YouTubers get a handle on things. Um, so just give me a moment here while I get set up. I'm using OBS only for the second time ever. And so I just want to get the chat up and running and I want to share this in a couple of places. So that'll take just a moment. A little stream section so, going on here. But I want to get the chat up and I want to pop it out. And then, like a ninja. And then, da, 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 I want to get the link and share it in a couple of places. So I'm gonna hop over to the Small YouTubers Facebook group. That's sort of where I'm from. I am the administrator of the Small YouTubers Facebook group. If you're not a member, I recommend you join. For one thing, we've got a discount code in the announcement area for TubeBuddy, saves you 20%. And uh, we're a group of 49,000 small YouTubers uh, just kind of supporting each other in different ways. Uh, so I do recommend joining the group if you're just discovering us here on YouTube. Da, 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 da. Let me just check if this is... Yeah, okay, that's doing what it should. Still learning some of this stuff, uh, OBS in particular, live streaming on YouTube, uh, figuring out sort of the best way of, uh, of doing that. Um, so, uh, I'm also going to get the chat up on my tablet here so I don't have to lose screen real estate for it. Uh... I'm live doing channel reviews, answering your questions, and maybe the odd tutorial as well. Drop the link. Okay, posting it to the group now. Hey, John. Got our first person in chat. I'm apparently a pirate. Well, I don't want to be a pirate. I'm okay being a pirate to a certain degree. I actually did um, a bit of uh, acting back in the day. And uh, so, you know, kind of... Um, Taking on the persona of a different person is kind of fun. Uh, I like Halloween for that. Um, I wish I had more notice about themes at my day job uh, because I would probably go like crazy all out for Halloween. Like I was working at an amusement park years ago, around the time that the second Matrix movie came out. And uh, so I was manager there and I wanted to really get into it, but I also needed to be professional in case I had to deal with an escalated situation. So I was trying to figure out, oh, how can I resolve this? Well, the answer seemed pretty simple to me. I was going to dress as Smith from The Matrix. Yeah, don't worry, John. I won't do your side again. Um, and so that way, I'm, you know, you're wearing a suit, and I can be professional, but I can also kind of be in costume and a character at the same time. So uh, the idea there was uh, I kind of studied the character a little bit. I figured out his diction, how he talked, the exact particulars of his whole costume. I figured out at what elevation his tie clip was uh, to get it just right. Made a name tag for myself that said Agent Smith. Um, and so it was for this Halloween event at the amusement park. And I'm walking around for like this two, three week period and everyone says, oh, you're an MIB, that's awesome. <laughs> that's a great costume. And I'm like, oh God, uh, yeah, sure, let's go with that. So, uh, all right, okay. We got JBCTR. Uh, says good evening. It's morning where I am, but good evening to you. Uh, just going to get chat loaded up on my tablet here, and then we are going to be off to the races with channel reviews, answering your questions, maybe little mini tutorials, whatever I can do to help you out as a small, medium, large YouTuber, whatever you might be. How's the sound? As I was just moving the microphone. <laughs> I'm also, because John likes it when I eat, I'm having oatmeal. <laughs> uh, this is really old oatmeal. <laughs> you might be watching the live stream in which Ray poisons himself. All right. Uh, okay. So, you get to that close now. 
Um, JB CTR. JB CTR. I assume you're here for a channel review. Oh yeah, no, 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 absolutely. And I doubt you've made massive changes to your channel since I did a mini review of it yesterday. Um, so JBCTR, just thinking about the name, if I were to make an assumption, I would suggest, I would assume that JB is your initials and that uh, CTR refers to like a CTR display, like an old style television. Uh, and so I'm kind of thinking slash hoping that you're a retro gamer. Let's find out. Okay. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Car and tech reviews. Okay, that's cool too. I had a test drive in a Tesla yesterday. Uh, it was my second time in a Tesla. Um, oh, you came to find other channels. Well, let me tell you about the Vacation Impossible YouTube channel. <laughs> it's my personal channel. Um, I've got the little magnet thingy up here. Um, and so basically, I've been filming since 2001. And I've been on YouTube since 2006, but I didn't upload my first video until 2008. Uh, so if you go way back in my back catalog, you'll see things that are so old, it's crazy. They were filmed in 2001. Um, oh yeah, I'd love a Tesla too. In fact, if you're looking for new channels, there's a guy named Brett Westgore who had a channel where he was saving up to buy a Tesla, and it was hilarious. He, uh, he got a second job, and so he hasn't been making new videos for a while. He said he was going to come back in September, but I haven't seen anything from him. Um, but he is awesome. I highly recommend him. Hey, Toby! Welcome to the party. That's what I like about doing this now at like a different time of day. Yesterday was kind of later in the day, like dinner time. Now it's like breakfast time, at least locally for me here in Vancouver. Uh, so I get to have a different kind of crowd show up, and that's awesome. Um, so anyways, yeah, I uh, we filmed things on like a, a camcorder that had like a little mini uh, Hi8 tape in it. And then I had to digitize it, so I had to buy like a video capture card. And it was, in 2001, it was so underpowered that I had to capture the audio and the video separately. It couldn't do both, or else I would have massive frame rate loss. Um, and so then I would have to, so putting video and audio together, I've been doing since day one for me, basically. I have uh, too much experience with that. I wish I didn't have to do it as much as I did. Uh, and the capture card could only capture at super low resolution. So my original videos are like 144 pixels tall. <laughs> so if you go watch my, my, my Playland video, my Hellsgate video, my camping video from years and years and years ago, the resolution is kind of upscaled a little bit, but not well. <laughs> um, and then like our second season, we got up to like 200 and some odd pixels tall because I upgraded the capture card. Um, but back then, I was compressing it these files super small so I could send them over ICQ and MSN Messenger because that's how I got my videos out before YouTube came along. I tried hosting them on GeoCities, and there are some various technical problems with that. Um, I tried Real Media Player, which nobody even knows about anymore because it's ancient technology. But uh, yeah, so I've been I've been at this for a while, um, and so eventually we got HD. Uh, you know, we went to Europe uh, in 2013. I went on my first cruise and pretty much fell in love with the whole thing. So we've been a little cruise obsessed ever since. But if you're looking for a channel, that's my plug for Vacation Impossible. Um, although I always tell people, talk about the value you add and why you're doing it. Why I do it is, uh, I grew up in poverty and through education, uh, myself and my friends were able to kind of climb our way out of poverty. And so as we were young adults, having just graduated university, we were having disposable income of a certain level for the first time in our lives. And I really wanted to travel and see the world. Uh, but because of our background, it was hard to explain to family and friends how that was a justifiable expense um, because they were they were used to not having a lot of uh, you know available funds. And so I thought that video would be a great way of showing them the fun that I'm having to try and convince them to come with me next time or go do their own thing and realize that travel. I've heard it said that travel is one of the things you spend money on that makes you richer. I like that. Uh, and uh, Stephen Merchant says it broadens the mind. I like that as well. So uh, that's why I got into it. Um, and over time, I've also been wanting to expand travel for more people. So I try to tell them how to do it cheaper, how to do it more often, maybe how to do it in a little different way, things off the beaten path, stuff like that. So that's what my main channel is about. But that's not what today's about. Today's about helping you guys out with your channels. Um, so there you go. Uh, and I'm actually logged in today as my Vacation Impossible account. Yesterday when I was doing live streams, I was the small YouTuber's Boost account. The reason I'm doing this is I want to show people uh, some TubeBuddy functions. And so, for example, um, the 
live stream I did yesterday, and you can rewatch that later. Not now, because I'm live. <laughs> but you can watch that. Maybe I'll add a card to the replay uh, so that uh, people can just click over. But uh, that was basically showing you the features of the free tube buddy. So now I'm on my account where I've actually got the legendary or legend level tube buddy. So you can see some different things. Uh, so people have been asking me about that in the Facebook group. So hopefully that'll help. So I'm just kicking over here as I continue to eat my, eat my oatmeal. You're welcome for mukbang fans, and I'm sorry for people who find this rude. I would be in the second category. So I've searched JBCTR, which is the guy's name. I assume you're a guy. I don't know. The person's name. Should be gender neutral. Um, and on the side, I've got my tube buddy, Search Explorer. One note. Uh, this video is not sponsored by anyone. There should be a link below the video in the description to TubeBuddy. If there's not, if you could let me know in chat, I would appreciate that. Uh, I'm also just going to plop it in chat. Uh, it's not sponsored, but it is an affiliate link, so if you do happen to sign up and get the paid program, I'll get a little something, not a whole heck of a lot, but that's really not why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I find this to be a super useful tool. Running the Small YouTubers um, Facebook group, make sure I get that right. Uh, yeah, that looks right. Um, message retracted. Hmm. I have much to learn about chat and YouTube. Anyways, um, running the group, I have been approached by probably seven or eight different companies with products that they want either to sponsor the group or for me to endorse or for me to share affiliate links or whatever. So far, a lot of them suck. <laughs> Just talking plainly here, um, you know, full disclosure, um, there was an Instagram one that just didn't work. It was a big waste of time. Oh, hey, no worries. No worries about the retraction, <laughs> as long as I'm not missing anything important. Uh, like, So, retraction is something you can do. You see, I'm learning too here, so that's cool. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, st stick with us. We're going to be covering a whole lot of stuff. i probably got about an hour and a half to do this. Uh, maybe I'll have a chance to look at your channel. Even if I don't, if I'm looking at other channels, maybe you'll pick something up that might help you. That's the idea anyways. So, um, yeah, I, like there was this Instagram thing that a uh, guy wanted to pay me 20 bucks to <laughs> share in the group. And it's not about the money. It was just about, like, is it a good product? Does it actually help people? And the bloody thing didn't work. Uh, and it was really frustrating. I was getting, I was, I was having back and forth with their, like, tech team about their, their app or plugin or whatever the heck it was, their website. Um, and at a certain point, I just had to cut it off. I said, like, look, guys, your product's not ready. Um, and I, I can't be your beta tester. I just simply don't have the available time. I'd rather be doing things like this, helping people, uh, you know, uh, YouTubers in real time than helping you, you know, fix this app that did not work at all. No proof of concept. The website barely loaded. It was a mess. So there was a bunch of things that people have over, over time. And sometimes they'll come to me like, hey, can you promote my Kickstarter? Be like, no, but here's how you might be able to post it in the group that adheres to the rules and may generate interest. Little things like that. But... Out of all the things that people have asked for sort of my official endorsement, I, I've really only given it to TubeBuddy. I'm, tr I'm trying out Talency a little bit, um, but I'm still learning about that. Uh, and I'll, I'll put a link to Talency as well, because they recently made a pretty cool avatar for me, uh, and so I was super impressed with that. Um, and again, like I said, that's an affiliate link as well, but I'm not sponsored uh, for this video by anybody. Um, and... Uh, Bear with me for a moment here as I do a little behind the scenes stuff. And that's Talency there, if you're curious about it. Uh, still figuring out what they're all about. So, so far they seem pretty good. And I'm just kind of going through. Oh, you know what? That's interesting. Are those links actually even showing? Last time I tried posting links as Vacation Impossible in the chat, they didn't go through. Um. Anyways, um, yeah, and so I'm still learning about Talency. I'm still learning about TubeBuddy, um, but I've definitely kind of, TubeBuddy has impressed the heck out of me. So that sort of got my endorsement, where a lot of products don't. So just to give you that context. So looking at the TubeBuddy search explorer here, um, there's most used tags that come up in relation to this search. Now, yesterday when I was doing this, if you were watching, you would have seen that there were only three that showed. But because I've got the legend, there's this massive list of all the related tags. So if that's something you're interested in, that's great. And of course, there's there's levels of gradation. You don't have to go full on legend. If you were to get pro or something, you'd get more than the three, but probably not all of them. And I'm seeing tags include Johnny Bedworth, which I believe is the name of the person in the group. So, yeah, um, you've got a pretty successful channel, as I recall. 
So, um, yeah, uh, Ford Fiesta review, Fiesta Fiesta Ford GoPro, Dyson. That's kind of interesting. Car and tech reviews, so that makes sense. Maybe you reviewed like a Dyson Airblade or vacuum cleaner or uh, a GoPro in addition to the car stuff. That's cool. So our channel description says, Welcome to JBCTR, the channel which hosts a variety of car and tech reviews, CTR. So, and, oh, and then it says, If you love cars and technology, then this dot dot dot. That's a nice point for it to truncate because it's kind of like, then this what? I'm curious. I want to read more. Uh, so it's a bit of a tease there, which is good. My one thought is that, um, and I harp on this a lot in these live streams, so I apologize if you're hearing this for like the 38th time. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, welcome to JBCTR. Um, the channel which. I think welcome and channel and probably hosts are not terms that are searched much. And so particularly um, people don't often remember to look at their channel descriptions with SEO in mind. Uh, some people look at it like a dating profile or something almost. What I would recommend is saying something like um, JBCTR is, um, uh, has a variety of car and then go from there and just cut out a lot of that preamble. It's very conversational, but if somebody's looking at a channel trying to decide am I going to click on that or not, Somebody saying welcome and this is a channel. I mean, people know it's a channel. The welcome thing doesn't add information or value or entice them very much. So I think that that beginning, those first two lines of your channel description are actually really important. I think more so than most people realize, although you've got, you know, nearly three times my subscribers. So what the heck do I know? But um, because that gets truncated and it gets truncated in different ways on different platforms, whether it's a mobile app, the mobile browser, or like me, I'm on uh, Firefox on the desktop here. Um, so you want to really make sure that those early characters are, are really packed with information and enticement. So that's one thought there. Also on the side here, um, there's the keyword score, which I don't believe showed up in the free version yesterday from TubeBuddy, so that's nice. So the search volume on your name is relatively no, low, which is understandable. But, and um, it's interesting, the competition's kind of a, a little higher. Uh, but overall, it's a good score, 51 out of 100, so that's not bad. Let's dive into your channel. Hello. I'll pause that there. A couple ground rules about what I'm doing today. Um, uh, oh, thanks, JB. Uh, glad that the, glad that this is uh, making sense. Uh, two ground rules. One, I won't be watching any videos. For one thing, um, that could take a lot of time, and I don't want to deal with content ID match issues, and I don't want people to think I'm like trying to steal or host their content because I'm really not. I'm just trying to help. Uh, and I won't be subscribing to anybody today just because I don't want this to be about you trying to sell me your channel in chat or elsewhere. I really want it to be about me trying to give some sort of value to you. Uh, if I see something I like, I may or may not go subscribe on my own time later. Um, but let's not make it about that. Let's make it about helping folks. Also because um, somebody watching you sell me your channel is probably less helpful than me giving advice that might also apply to other people. That's just my two ground rules. Other than, you know, standard decorum stuff. Um... Thanks, thanks, John. Um, yeah, I hope these rules make sense. Uh, and people have talked about the possibility uh, and asked me about the idea of doing video reviews. And because that could be really timely and I just wouldn't know how to manage the supply and demand. What I'm doing today is I'm going chronologically. I'm going by the order in which people talked in chat. Uh, and so that's easy, it's free, it's fair for everyone. If you can figure out a way to bribe me, maybe you can jump the queue, but I don't have anything in place right now. Uh, <laughs> but the idea for the videos is it would take so much time, time I could be helping more people other elsewhere, uh, I'd probably have to charge if I were to go down that route. Uh, so anyways, that's that's just not on the offing for today. So looking here, uh, just at the, the freeze frame that I got on your, um, your welcome video here, it looks like your uh, video production values are pretty high. It looks very professional, sort of a cinematic sense. Good, it looks like good lighting, crisp image, good focus. Um, there's no distractions in the shot, uh, but it's interesting enough with enough going on. So uh, I think that's probably a big part of why you're doing so well, is you've got that professionalism there. That's why you're nearly 3K. Looks like it's, yeah. Oh no, you're at 3K now. Did you just pick up like your 3,000 subscriber? If you did, congratulations. <laughs> um, I can't imagine it's for me uh, covering it, but hey, who knows? That would be cool. Um, so 2018 intro to JBCTR, welcome. Um, it does, That doesn't feel super searchable, but it's also a channel trailer, so it's not a huge concern. I think you're probably doing okay there. Um, here's what you can expect from JBCTR going forward. Um, be sure to hit that subscribe button to receive notifications and my up and coming videos. Don't forget to check out my Facebook page where all my videos are all so posted, along with other behind the scenes content. So in terms of, and that's, that's all it says above the fold. 
uh, and I've explained this before, that it's analogous to a newspaper that's folded over and on a, on a newspaper stand. I know I'm talking like an old time here, but um, basically everything above the fold, anyone walking by can see, so more eyeballs are on above the fold. The computer variation is everything that you see without having to scroll is above the fold. It's prime real estate. In the newspapers, they used to pay more for advertising above the fold. Uh, and so it's important to kind of, I think, be conscious of what's above the fold on your channel. And it will be different on mobile and in apps. But on desktop, I'm just looking at that. So for the description here, uh, it's okay. I would suggest um, talking more after your first sentence about what is going to be expected on your channel uh, going forward. What is the plan? Put it in text a little bit. Um, so it's a 40 second video, 40, 46 second video, so that's a good length for channel intro. But this isn't going to be where you're going to be really mining your watch time. So if you kind of spoil it in the description, I think that's okay. For one thing, this will autoplay, so by the time they read it, it would have completed playing. And so I think you could actually talk about it because one of the things that, um, like Roberto Blake and others, they talk about is sometimes your description can be functionally a blog post. And when it is, even though that's a lot of work and people might not read it, it might be a little tedious to create. Um, it gives great SEO um, and potentially great value to the people watching. So um, that's just a thought. And uh, instead of up and coming videos, uh, I would say new videos. Um, up and coming implies that it's kind of working its way up the charts. It's not really what notifications are for. In, I mean, because that can happen to old videos too, right? It's really about new videos. It's a nitpick, but, and this could be my own little hangup because in the small YouTubers Facebook group, I'm constantly having to reject posts where the description says, I'm an up and coming YouTuber, and then they just drop their link. And so that frustrates me a little bit. And so that might be bleeding through and biasing me a little bit here. But um, as a phrase, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not personally a fan of it. Oh, you hit uh, 3K an hour ago um, because you're doing well in search. That's awesome, man. That's fantastic. Uh, your banner is lovely. Um, I got nothing on that banner. That is that is great work there. Um, don't change anything there. You got your social links there, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. That's fantastic. Um, you got a favorite channel. That's good. You got related channels, so YouTube knows what you're about. That's probably partly why your search is doing so well. If YouTube didn't know what you were about, that would say popular channels. So good on you there. Um, you've got pretty br uh, vibrant thumbnails, which is fantastic. It looks like, you know, you've got some, uh, uh, you, you throw in like the icons when you're covering, um, tutorials for programs. Very smart. You've got your own sort of logo. That's fantastic. Um, and it's kind of your, your personal logo has a bit of a pastel feel to it, which I'm guessing is intentional. Um, if it were me... I would want to make those colors a little, because pastel is kind of muted a little bit, and so for me, I'd want the colors to be more highly saturated, but that's just a design aesthetic. You can do what you like. Um, my one thought also is your um, your profile picture there with the JB, uh, and you've got that gradient fill behind it where it's white in the middle and black on the outside. Um, it's not having great contrast against some of those letters that they're not super great to read. Like, for example, compare that to the laptop in your banner or the cell phone screen in your banner. The JB really pops there, um, but not so much in your icon, uh, your profile picture. So uh, you might want to consider tweaking that up a little bit to make it more like the other thing so that there's a better contrast there. Um... But yeah, no, this looks great. You've got your car reviews, you've got your technology reviews, how-tos, uh, you got your own kind of personal stuff. Hey, you got engaged like seven months ago. Congratulations, that's awesome. Um, uh, looks like it was like at the top of a very long hike. That's that's nice, I like that. Um, other reviews. Uh, I say this a lot in these uh, live streams, but you could also, if you wanted to, add maybe at the bottom a popular uploads or popular videos. Uh, which is sort of a default feature you just enable on uh, YouTube. So if somebody instantly wants to see what's your most popular thing, go to the bottom of your page, there it is. You might also, if it works for you, I don't know if it does, because I'm not, uh, I, you know, car reviews isn't really uh, an area I know a lot about. Um, just having your most recent uploads showing. You could, you couldn't, because if people click on videos, they'll see it there as well. Um, something to think about if you haven't, you probably have. Let's take a look at your analytics. Okay. Uh, you got some tags here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
comedy, funny, creative. Mm. And so if your reviews are funny, this entices me as a potential audience member because I like that idea. Like, I love watching Pat the NES Punk reviews. I like the Angry Video Game Nerd. Um, uh, you know, I, I like watching some Cinema Sins and stuff like that. So uh, funny reviews, uh, that might be my jam. So you're doing well there. Not much to talk about with the tags, I think. Um, one thing I will mention that some people don't know about with the channel keywords is you can combine them, but it's not immediately apparent how. Um, you can separate them with a comma or with uh, put them in quotes. I think quotes is the better way to go uh, because people will go in and they're not sure. Uh, they'll type something in because it's a free text field if you look at it in uh, Creator Studio. Um, but it defaults to thinking that every word is, is its own keyword. So, if, for example, in addition to having car, technology, and reviews, you also wanted to have car reviews and technology reviews as two separate keywords, you can throw them in with quotation marks around them. That might might, might be a good idea, especially if you're going to be, uh, if your strategy involves going after slightly longer tail keywords, that's how you would do it at the channel level. About page. My oatmeal is cold. I was talking too much. Yeah, um, this is pretty good. Uh, saying thanks, Johnny. I mean, it's conversational. I don't know that it adds to the SEO, but you can keep it if you want. I would bulk up your description. One thing I often recommend to people is talk about, like, your top three um, subjects or videos or something. Like, you could say, like, you know, um, whether it's our amazing review of this BMW or Tesla or, you know, this new Canon um, or our proposal video. Uh, there's always something new on the channel. Please remember to check us out. Something like that. But it's, it's that structure of, like, the rule of three. Um, and, and just cite like three sort of examples because then it'll align a little bit with the SEO. Or you could just talk more generally about the categories that you're in and just break it down with a little bit more detail. Um, there's this old joke that, uh, what is it? It's um, an SEO expert walks into a pub, watering hole, bar, you know, den, whatever. <laughs> um, I didn't deliver it very well. But the idea is, is also, um, it, it you can't do keyword packing like it was like way back in the day, like the days of GeoCities. But uh, synonyms are still kind of important. But you want to hit the synonyms in uh, in a way that flows sentence-wise. Uh, and so that's why I think talking a little bit more and using a few more uh, synonyms, you know, because you say car and tech reviews. So if you you know if you love cars, you could be later saying you know we have a passion for vehicles because vehicles could be a synonym. It's a broader category, but. That's just a thought of, of trying to trying to build in some of those synonyms. Um, you're in the UK. That's fantastic. Uh, I know uh, I know that UK is more than London, but I just want to say I love London. Uh, it's one of my favorite places to be. Um, and uh, you got your social links there, so that's all looking quite good. You've got about half a million views, which is fantastic. Uh, so yeah, I know you didn't come here for a channel review, but there you go. You got it anyways, uh, and I think you're doing quite well. Don't need a lot of help from me. Uh, let's check the chat. See who's next. Toby. This is the part where I say nice things about Toby's thumbnails because they're good. If you haven't watched some of my past li live streams, Toby, I, I talk about your thumbnail design aesthetic uh, every now and then, but always in a positive way. Hmm. This is interesting. Okay, oatmeal done. Um... What I'm finding interesting is on my TubeBuddy search explorer, on the sidebar there you'll see, the most used tags. Um, so I, I, you know, I understand that you're, you're a travel channel, but some of the tags are Jesus, Christian, Sermon. Uh, I'm wondering if that's coming off of the creation thing or if there's a faith component to your channel. I've only watched one or two of your videos. I've looked at your channel a few times uh, just because I'm like insane balls busy. Um, but I'm wondering if... Um, you see Berkeley. That's interesting. You are you're in California though, right? Worship, Kickstarter, a lot of interesting. How to find small YouTubers to collab with? Interesting. Ger German, Paris, Daddy. Uh, are you a father? <laughs> um, so it's it's interesting. Some of the tags that are associated with the with your um, with your name. I don't know what to do about it, but it's interesting. Okay. Um, and just your name. Uh, search volume is in the orange. Uh, and competition is sort of in the yellow. It's good, but it's just, it's your name. One thing I, I do uh, like, and, and you actually helped me with this, is uh, uh, putting some of those uh, cool icons 
in Facebook and I use them quite a bit on Instagram, I remember noticing. Um, I don't think they're super searchable, but they look cool. So um, that's that's not bad. So, uh, and you're, you're, you've got your 1,000 subscribers, so congratulations there. I'm not sure how long ago that happened. Uh, Toby is a travel vlogger and be our creator. Subscribe for new video on Facebook here. That's fine. Um, I would suggest bulking it up a little bit uh, prior to mentioning your social links because uh, early on in your description isn't when people are going to be looking for social links. They don't know you yet. This is where you're selling yourself still. So again, I would suggest talking about uh, some of the amazing places you visited. I know that you did a thing where you were um, you had like a travel or a train trip all over the United States or something, which is I'm kind of envious of and wouldn't mind doing one day. Uh, JB, I hope it helps. Um, that would be very exciting. And remember me when you're famous. Well, more famous. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, yeah anyways, uh, so I would, I would uh, try to think about if you, I mean, you're a travel guy, I'm a travel guy. If I'm looking at something, what's going to make me want to click? What's the value add? If you can get that a little earlier in the description, that might be worthwhile. Uh, let's dive into your channel. Best spots to take Eiffel Tower photos. That is a cool idea. I love Paris. Paris is nice. Um, I have many Paris... Well, I've only been to Paris twice, but I have many Paris stories. Um, I, I'm not sponsored, but I'm just going to have myself a, a vitamin. Um, a lot of people, particularly in Vancouver, are vitamin D deficient, and they don't know it. So I take vitamin C and D supplements. Keeps me healthy. Keeps me happy. If you struggle with seasonal affective disorder, vitamin D can help with that. Okay. Just so you know what I'm chewing on, in case you're curious. All right. Um, oh, that's great. I love I love your use of icons from a visual standpoint. They're cool. They're not searchable at all, but they look very nice. Um, your banner is as good as always. Um, you got your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and Pinterest. You know, something weirds going on with my Pinterest lately. My pins normally get like a hundred impressions a week. Last week I got a thousand, thirteen hundred actually. Don't I don't understand Pinterest very much at all. Uh, I believe it's it, it trends largely female, but beyond that, I don't know much about it. I've taken the Hootsuite online course about social media, and that's how I know it trends female. Also, it's just kind of intuitive, I think. But even having taken that course, uh, I never took the test though. I wasn't going to give them the money. <laughs> I just took the free class and then didn't take the test, so I didn't have to pay anything. I recommend it. I think it's a good idea to do. It gives you some useful insight into what different social media platforms are good for what. Uh, but when it comes to Pinterest. I don't really have a handle on it. Um, and when it comes to Snapchat, that might as well be in Greek because I, I, I am no good at Snapchat. Um, but I'm curious, do you get much uh, traffic from um, Snapchat at all? <laughs> Smashing it out of the park. Thanks, JB. Okay, so um, now is the part where Ray says nice things about Toby's thumbnails. <laughs> um, You'll notice in his uh, profile picture, uh, I'm not so much critiquing Toby as using him as an example, <laughs> which is good. And in his thumbnails, he's got this nice light blue banner, or no, border, and it's really consistent. So I know when I'm looking at something of Toby's uh, that he's always got a border. Sometimes it's purple. Uh, occasionally there isn't, but that's, that is, you'll notice that this one over here, for example, is a little off brand for him. So probably that's why the design aesthetic's a little different. Um, so he's got sort of his personal adventures that doesn't have the blue border. So clearly he set some sort of rules for himself that there's some consistent organization behind the scenes. Or maybe they're just older videos that he hasn't uh, updated the, um, the thumbnails on. Like, for example, I'm looking here and I'm seeing that the text is, is a sort of cursive. It's a little harder to read versus uh, his newer stuff where he uses a bolder text that pops out easier. But nevertheless, he's got time lapse. Oh, and you've got... Oh, man, I'm going to steal this idea maybe, I think. Uh, you got icons in your playlist titles. I love it. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's genius. It adds a little color, a little diversity without going full MySpace. It's great. Um, he's got some featured channels. Uh, I guess his own personal channel here. Um, popular channels, which means that... And, you know, I think this is a struggle with us travel people, is that if we're too broad, YouTube just doesn't know what to make of us. When I'm putting out videos about cruises, cruise, 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 then I get related channels and it's cruising channels but if i throw in a road trip video the whole thing goes to hell and some suddenly it's popular channels again so um i like i think many creators are struggling with this idea of do i want to narrow my focus to make the algorithm happy or do i want to do what like artistically feels right i don't know 
That's a difficult choice. Uh, channel with X. This is a two buddy feature. So, um, yeah, you got some good stuff there. Um, however, I noticed you have time and lapse as two separate keywords. This, I think, is that thing I was talking about earlier. Pardon me, it's a chewable vitamin. It takes a little while. <laughs> um, if you put quotations around time lapse, it'll treat that as a single keyword of two words. That might work better for you. Um, but otherwise, I think I think you're pretty good here. Uh, if you wanted to bulk it up, you could add some more things, but I think you're doing fine. Uh, let's check the about page. I have reviewed Toby before, so it's going to be a bit of a light touch. This guy knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, one thing I would really say about your description, somewhere in here, I would say maybe before the word subscribe, because again, this is where you're selling yourself early on, especially in the early part of the description. Keep the subscribe for new video just a little further down and just have like one or two sentences about why do you do it or what are you most proud of that you've accomplished, some examples of what you cover, what you've done. Jeez, you're having on musically. Although I guess that, that's TikTok now, right? Because they got bought out. The hell is Veer? <laughs> are you on Vero? I'm on Vero. Nobody knows what Vero is. I'm thinking of getting off of Flickr. Um, they're making some changes, and I've never, I swear to God, I've never gotten one view from Flickr. <laughs> um, and you got your uh, your email, but it's, uh, that's, yeah, you're on Weibo. That's actually pretty, pretty smart uh, for that part of the world. Um, yeah, no, it looks like, looks like you're doing pretty good there. But yeah, just bulk up the description. If you can talk to the why of what you do, some people really identify with that. I've talked about this before, but uh, for a lot of consumers, customers, audience, whatever you want to call them, they'll watch something because it's for a good a good cause or a good, or, or their intentions are good. Um, you know, like, for example, uh, the Tesla guy, uh, Brett Westgore, I watch him partly because I identify with what he wants to do. He wants to get a Tesla because he wants to, you know, be more environmentally conscious and stuff like that. And, and so that's a huge part of why I, I'm actually a huge fan of his, and I wish he would start putting out content again. Um, yes, uh, Pal's Lives... Pal's Lives Life. You, I am live right now. I just read your comment. It's happening. You're here. All right, let's find another channel to take a look at or another question to address. <laughs> Oh, Premiere Pro matches video and audio automatically. Well, I mean, if it's from the same source, but if you record on a microphone that is no way connected to your phone or your camera, you still need to... Is there a function in Premiere that I don't know about that does that for you? Because I, my trick is I clap three times so that the waveforms spike and I line the waveforms. Am I, like, am I taking the long way around on that? Um... Meg's Toys and More. You're up next. Meg's Toys and More. Go. Things loading here. Okay, so uh, the most used tags that I'm seeing from my Legend version of TubeBuddy, not sponsored. Um, toys, Disneyland Paris, Disney, Disney Paris, new toys. It's interesting that the tags that I'm seeing, particularly at the top, lol, that's funny, oh, lol dolls, I guess that's a, okay, yeah, I'm seeing it in the thumbnails there. Um, it's interesting that all of these don't have spaces in them. And then eventually, kids' toys and toys for kids. But it's a lot of things together with no spaces, which, uh, and then, yeah, and then you get some later. I mean, you might not necessarily be using these, but it's, it's interesting, because, uh, yeah, so, like... Um, for channels, again, if you put it in quotation marks or, you know, you just use the um, the tagging feature on specific videos, you can definitely have spaces in there. So it could be Disneyland Space Paris. Uh, and that might be more likely how someone searches. I'm not sure. You could check your um, your traffic sources and see how, how you're doing in search and what search terms do well for you. Uh, and that might give you an idea of uh, search terms to use in the future. Um, so... Uh, yeah, some people's question about tags. Maybe we'll we'll look at some tags. I don't know. Do you want me to do that? I could go into one of my videos. We can look at the tags if you want. Um, search volume for your name is low, and there's a higher competition than search volume, which is kind of funny, but it's still coming out as good. But it's just a name. Uh, it's not generally how people end up getting found, so that's fine. My first toboggan ride. 
That looks cool. I mean, I've been on a toboggan on snow, but and I've seen things on like TV and YouTube about these sort of these metal things that are like almost a luge. I would very much want to try that. That looks that looks cool. Uh, looking at your um, uh, your icon, your profile picture there, you have white with a with sort of a, a border, a bit of a drop shadowy thing with a stroke outline going on there, and then another layer of white on the outside. I wonder if it would pop better if you dri dropped the outer white outline and increased the font size by like 10%. It might be more readable, I'm not sure. Um, just a thought. Looking at one of your videos would be great for tags. Okay, maybe after this channel review I'll do that. Try to remind me and we can poke around. I'm not saying I'm great or anything, but at least you can see how it works. That might be useful. So, uh, the description. Hi guys, my name is Meg. Welcome to my channel. Join me for toy and game reviews arts and crafts, and many more. So you dot, dot, dot. So I would... I would drop a lot of that opening. A lot of that's not searchable. Hi, guys. My name is... Welcome to my channel. Join me for... Those words I just said, I don't think people are searching for on YouTube. Not really searchable. It's conversational. If it was a dating profile, that'd make perfect sense to introduce yourself in that kind of a way. If you're talking to someone, that's fine. One of the things I've, I've thought about and heard about over the years is people who sometimes write like they talk. Some people do and some people don't. Uh, and that can be both good and bad depending on the venue. And I think that at the very beginning of your channel description is not the time to write like you talk. It's the time to almost write like a salesperson, but not, I don't know, hopefully in an authentic sort of way, uh, where you really want to give the value and entice the people in uh, rather than be conversational. So I would say start off with uh, Meg's Toy and Game Reviews. Uh, you can drop the apostrophe from Reviews. Um, arts and Crafts, and instead of many more, maybe much more, I think it would be better grammar. Uh, and then maybe go into, like, uh, cite a couple of specific examples, things that you, you do well in search on, or videos or subjects that you have a lot of uh, traffic on. So it could be, you know, Meg's Toy and Game Reviews, Arts and Crafts, and much more uh, from our lol dolls review to you know sliding on a metal toboggan come check us out something like that it's a little bit more searchable people will be searching for those things and that way your channel description lines up with some of your videos and you have some keyword alignment that you could be rocking there uh, ba -ba -ba. let's get into the channel 294 subscribers so um the banner's nice. I like that. My one concern, it looks fine to me right now, but if I were to look at this on a mobile browser or in the mobile YouTube app, I'm not sure how it would crop. It might crop perfect. If it just cuts the two heads off, then you've got it. Um, but I would be worried that it might be like half a face, and maybe that would be okay. Uh, just a thought, because it looks good on desktop. No criticisms or suggestions for desktop. But if you haven't taken a look just quickly on your phone to see how it displays, uh, it might scale wonderfully. It might not. Um, so I just, that's the thing that I think everyone at some point should do to make sure that their channel looks, uh, good at all resolutions. Basically, you've got a social link on the side for Instagram, but I noticed that the icon's not appearing. So, uh, I'll talk more about that when I get to your about page and I'm going to go on my quick little Twitter rant here. Uh, so I believe that every YouTuber should be on Twitter, not because I think Twitter's awesome, but because it's free, quick, easy, set it and forget it. What does that mean? It means that you can go and sign up on Twitter pretty quickly and you can integrate it into your YouTube such that every time you post a new video, every time you add a video to a playlist, it will send out a tweet. So why not do that? Set it and forget it and make it work for you. Um, the other thing is lock down your brand as much as you can on whatever social media you can. And Twitter's a good spot for that. Uh, so it's like the fantasy is you go to bed. And like an hour after you fall asleep, some famous person in Singapore or something, maybe a K-pop star or something, stumbles across your video and shares it somewhere. Twitter, wherever. And you blow up overnight. You wake up to a million views and 10,000 subscribers, and suddenly you're a brand. And it just happened. There's, It's not likely, but it would be cool. And hey, let's be prepared for success, right? And so if that happened, what if somebody thought, hey, you know what? This person's getting this traffic. I want to steal some of it. I want to, I want to, you know, coast on their brand or I want to pretend to be them. Uh, so you want to try and sign up for uh, usernames on various platforms, particularly Twitter, I think, because it's easy and quick, um, that locks down some version of your, of your brand. Uh, so someone else can't come along and take it. Uh, and part of why I suggest, it's not that I'm like a conspiracy nut or anything. It's just that we actually had a problem with the small YouTubers booth Facebook group. And I've talked about this before, but, um, people were setting up discord servers and saying they were us. 
There were people pretending to be me or that I had approved them, and those things were not true. There is a Discord server. Uh, I'm not really a part of it. Matthew runs it. Um, just because I don't have time to learn all about Discord. I've been in it like once or twice, and I, I just don't have the time to invest. Uh, so, so the official one for Small YouTubers Boost is run by Matthew, and there is a link to it in the social links of the, the channel you're watching this video on right now. So if you want to find our official um, Discord, that's how you find it along to, you know, sometimes it's posted in the group. But that way you know you got the right one instead of one of these imposters out there. Uh, and so that's actually part of why I created this channel and some other things is I didn't want people trading on our good name. Uh, so that's just, I mean, it's a little crazy, but if you want to be successful one day, you know, visualize success, drive towards it. You know, one of the things they say about driving is you look where you want to go because of something called target fixation. So if you're driving and there's an obstacle and you stare at the obstacle, your natural inclination, subconscious, hard to override, is to actually going to be just drive towards and drift towards the obstacle. Um, and so that's true of so many things in your life. And so picture a successful you, a successful YouTube channel, and you're running it. And then if you if that's your focus, then you're going to steer a bit more towards that. And uh, it's like the power of positive thinking. Whether How much you believe in that is up to you, but I don't think it can hurt. And so be prepared for success. And maybe that is what will help you get to success. Oh, hey. Um, yeah, uh, Matt is in chat. Chat, uh, or Matt... <laughs> Did you just hear me plugging the Discord server? I was saying nice things about you, I swear. <laughs> um, yeah, and Toby says you should be on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. You see, that's the thing. I don't understand Snapchat at all, but I signed up and got an account because I, I locked it down. Because one day I might learn, one day I might need it, one day there might be an imposter. There's a whole bunch of reasons. Uh, and maybe that might be how some particular someone reaches out to me at some point in the future for a collab or a sponsorship or whatever. Um, so, yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. So anyways, uh, Twitter rant over. Let's go back to the layout here. So you've got your uploads, which is cool. People can see your most recent stuff in order. I really want to click on the toboggan ride video, but I said I wouldn't. Um, I would say a popular uploads is an easy one to add to so people can right away see what's doing well. And so can you at a glance, which is not bad. Um, and I'm noticing that there is at least two separate themes here. And there seems to be a travel component and a toy component. Yeah, so... I want to see, well, I'm going to look. Do you have playlists? You do. Okay. It's interesting. Um, some things about playlists. People... Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Matthew, I was basically telling people that there's a social link to the official Discord server on this channel, on the Small YouTubers Boost channel. So if they go to our homepage, in the banner, right-hand side, that link takes them to, I believe I got it right, the, the uh, official Discord server should be there. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> so anyways, um, playlists. People forget about playlists sometimes. It's easy to focus on so many other things. There's a lot to know and do with YouTube. I get it. It's overwhelming. Uh, that's why I try to like parcel it out. That's why I know I don't have time to learn Snapchat right now. I don't have the capacity to learn Discord right now. Um, and so I'm, you know, but one day I'll probably expand there. So, you know, try to take it bite size. But playlists are relatively easy bite size that people tend to forget with all the other distractions. So, for example, the titles of your playlists are searchable. And so I'm seeing here support 60, KNF 60, KNF. 45 can of 15. I don't know what that is. Um, and it doesn't seem to align with what I'm seeing as the thumbnails. So um, I would suggest revising those. If you have some sort of episodic numbering system or that means something to you, that's fine. You can keep it in the playlist. You can put it as a parenthetical at the end of the playlist. Um, but actually put something more descriptive uh, as the playlist name. And also check that you have playlist descriptions. Uh, because those often get neglected. And at no point does YouTube say, hey, you're creating a playlist without a description. In fact, normally it's you create the playlist, then you have to go back in and add the description later. Most people don't do that. So if they're not doing it, but you do, that's a competitive advantage for you. Uh, so what I would do is, is create, um, and, and you have one that says Meg's Toys and More, uh, but that's the name of your channel. Uh, so if that's just all your videos, I think that there's an automatically created uploads playlist. So you might be doubling your effort there. Um, but I have to admit, no, you have, you have more than five videos. So that's not what that is. I'm not sure. But anyways, my recommendation is, yeah, some playlists that are descriptive. And I would say like one about travel, one about toys as a bare minimum. And you can have 
multiple play you can have your video in multiple playlists there's an option in um youtube to mark which playlist is like the official one for that video but it can be in a multitude so don't worry about doubling up for example and toby if you haven't done this you might want to consider it i need to do it i need to sit my butt down and get the work done um but what i uh, i had this idea like a month or two ago is i should create a playlist for every destination i've been to i've been to cozumel like six times I should probably, if somebody just wants to see all the Cosmel videos, I should make a playlist to make that easier and it would improve my searchability. I just haven't had the time to sit down and actually do the work. So that's just something to think about. Um, so yeah, I would create, I would, so I would say try to have at least like four rows of videos on your homepage. Uploads, most popular, and at least like two subjects. Uh, just so people can kind of see that it, it looks more organized, more put together. Um, there's no channel trailer, short version of my channel trailer rant. Sit down. With like a like a thought exercise, like brainstorming, and think of the top three to six cool things you've ever done in a video. What was the most amazing image you captured, or the exciting thing that happened, or the part you had the most fun, or the most popular, or something? The thing that people comment about, whatever. Uh, the first things that come to your brain. Don't don't think too much about it. Just jot it down. Go find snippets of those. Put them together in a video that's somewhere between thirty and ninety seconds, and that's your channel trailer. Set it to music. Use the original audio. Whatever works for you. Um, uh, but then you'll have something that when someone lands on your page, it auto plays. I'm not a fan of autoplay, but it's the way of the world. It's standard for YouTube. People will have accepted it. They're not going to blame you for it. Um, and that's a view and watch time that you can get just by people landing on your page. So it's not a bad idea. Let's check the analytics. Okay. So you've got some channel tags here. Not bad. Um, and what I'm thinking here is, is it did look like there were some sort of travel components to some of your videos, Disneyland Paris, for example, and the toboggan. I'm thinking that those are a newer kind of video for you and that maybe you haven't updated your tags in a while. Just a theory. Um, and also, if you go into your channel keywords, remember, if you put quotation marks around them, you can have multiple words in a single keyword. And for smaller channels, that could be a really smart way to go because, for example, I'm all my, my vacation impossible channel is all about cruises and cruising and I cruise on carnival if I were to go after the carnival cruises keyword that is so popular and so competitive it would be really hard for me to do well but if I can do what they call a long tail keyword it's a keyword with multiple words you're more likely to get a little niche that you can carve a slice out of so rather than trying for something that you're not competitive in at all and I'm not saying that's the case here I'm talking generally um, but going after a more narrow thing where maybe you can be competitive, uh, that's the way that small channels can start finding an audience and maybe they can become more competitive for the for the more generic terms over time when they've got like the watch time and other things that makes the algorithm happy behind them. But in, the, in when you're a smaller channel like mine, Longer tail keywords often can do better. Um, you can t start typing things into the banner. If you don't, if you don't want to get too buddy, you don't have to. Start typing things into the search bar in both YouTube and Google and see what autocomplete options come out. And if those sort of things accurately describe either your channel or your videos, then put that whole search term as a phrase, as a single keyword, even though it's multiple words with spaces in between, and you might do a lot better on those particular searches. You're gonna get a bigger slice of a smaller audience, but at least you're getting something instead of a, a space where you might not be competitive in at all uh, and always keep that stuff accurate no clickbait i don't want to get into the clickbait debate <laughs> um so that's that let's check the about page yeah so um it's interesting you've got hashtags here but they aren't functional hashtags they're not clickable so uh hashtags should be on your video descriptions um a friend of mine sunny achilles melee keeps getting on me about this i need to do this more with my videos uh, if you put hashtags in the description of a video, YouTube will pick up the first three, highlight them blue as links, and put them above your description. That's becoming a popular thing. It's just started. Uh, and my belief is the algorithm rewards people who use as many YouTube features as possible. So uh, one thing I recommend is make sure you have at least three hashtags. I would say only three. Don't go more than three. In the description for each of your videos. But at the channel level, I don't think it does anything. So I would probably remove those and instead try to put those uh, words into sentence structure uh, so that it, it, you know, it, it seems natural, it flows, and it doesn't look like keyword packing, which YouTube's not a fan of outside of the keyword field on your videos and your channel. So I would drop the, hey guys, I talked about this before, so you know, kind of refer to what I said earlier, but I would bulk it up. I would add a couple more sentences just talking more about what you do. Talk about why you do it. What's your, 
uh, what's your motivation? Um, are you trying to help? And, and here's a thought that I recommended, uh, I think it was on the 10th when I did a live stream, talking about another toy channel. Um, I think you're at the bottom of a potential crest of uh, a, a climbing opportunity that you could ride, a wave, uh, because the holiday season is upon us, and parents and aunts and uncles and people who are buying toys for kids are facing the threat of Christmas. I love Christmas. I'm putting up my Christmas tree later today, probably. It's in a box right over there. <laughs> I love Christmas so much, but there's anxiety around shopping, and particularly if it's a child that you don't know particularly well. Maybe you want to get them the latest thing. Maybe you want to get them not the latest thing. Maybe, you know, whatever. So if there's an opportunity to do a buying guide for this holiday season, I don't know. This is not my area. But uh, even if it's just a clip show, you could be like, you know, um, you know, t uh, top five, uh, top five toys of 2018. You don't even have to in the title say that it's a buying guide. But if you make like a little something like that and just show some clips of the stuff that you've done, uh, if you've got kids on the show, you know, the things that they really liked, you could do a, a five worst or toys to avoid this holiday season if, if they were like, what the hell is this? Something like that. I think that this is, uh, in terms of what they call tentpole videos, this is a video that's tied to a particular event or time of year. For example, my How to Dress for Alaska video does very, very well from like January to August. But come September, it gets nothing. Uh, and that's because nobody's thinking about traveling to Alaska from like September to December. And that's because it's probably cold where they are. And that's understandable. Um, but starting in January is where you book your vacation time and things like that. And then it starts to pick up. And I've only come to realize that recently. I was like, what's happening? Did I upset the algorithm gods? No, it was a seasonal video and I need to, I need to appreciate that and then I can use that. So maybe if I want to refresh the thumbnail, maybe in April, maybe that'll help give it a boost. I don't know. But these are some things to think about. And so I think toy channels now is a great opportunity for you to possibly even just quickly put something together that could really help people. Not just get views for yourself, but you could actually be super helpful for these anxiety-ridden parents, aunts, uncles, family, friends that are trying to figure out what am I going to get these kids. Um, so anyways, there's that little rant. This is just a collection of rants. <laughs> um, so... Wait, hold on. I think there's a problem with your Instagram link. Stand by. Yep. Your Instagram link does not work. You have misspelled Instagram. There is no T in your Instagram link. You have Instagram. So that's probably why the icon's not showing up. Um, so it's good that you want to have Instagram. It's good that you're on Instagram. You need to correct the typo in your URL. Right now, it's not linking anywhere. Uh, fix that. The icon should show up, and then you'll start driving some traffic possibly to your Instagram. It'll look a little bit more professional. Easy fix. Um, I'm, uh, I'm glad we talked. <laughs> Hopefully you're still watching because it's an easy thing to fix. Um, you know, easy w wins that pay off over time is some of the best stuff. All right, I'm just going to get caught up on chat here and see what's going on. Pauline T said hi. I think I should probably review Pauline's channel. Pauline T. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. I was going to show you some keyword tags. All right, let's get into Creator Studio here. I have to make sure not to show you any revenue stuff because um, AdSense in YouTube doesn't want you showing that, but I will try to just focus on things that's okay. For one thing, I need, I'm need i waiting to be remonetized, so any of my information would be old, but let's go find a nice old video. Maybe something with a content ID match so I've never made money on it. <laughs> I clicked on that, right? Come on. Come on, boy. You can do it. I believe in you, Firefox. I fought in the browser wars. Um, here we go. Kennedy Space Center. God, this video sucked. <laughs> if you can't be honest about your own videos, then, you know, whatever. It's gotten one comment, no likes, no dislikes, 15 views. It's a 12-minute video. My thumbnail's okay. I need to update that. That could be better. But let's go take a look, and I'll show you how TubeBuddy Legend looks when you're editing a video. So TubeBuddy has three components. Uh, it's a browser plugin, which you're seeing here. It's a website, and it's also a mobile app. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the things that we've got going on in this video. Oh, mine. Honestly, this, this auto thumbnail up here looks better than the thing I made myself. What was I thinking? 
you know, it was July of 2016, and I didn't get serious about YouTube until probably November 2016. That's when I really was like, you know what, I'm sick of putting out videos and only getting 15 views. I'm going to educate myself about this stuff, and I've been at it ever since. So I'm going to give myself a bit of a pass here on the guilt trip train, uh, because it was before I was super serious about things. I was just screwing around so I could show videos to family back then. But, I mean, I've got some great footage here. I've got that giant building and stuff. Like, i got, I got to do something with that. Um, if nothing else, I want to go back in time and say, Ray, up the vibrance and the saturation on that thumbnail because when it scales down, it, the colors don't pop. I talked about that yesterday. In Photoshop, there's an adjustment called vibrance where there's two uh, bars you can adjust. One is vibrance and one is saturation. You can play with increasing those 25, 50, maybe not at all, depending. Make, it, make sure it still looks natural, doesn't pixelate. But when you take a nice large image and then the thumbnail shrinks it down, my personal theory is that you lose saturation on the colors and they get look muted. If you've experienced this, this might be why. So to compensate for it, you increase the saturation uh, when you're editing it and then hopefully the colors still look good. So yeah, look at this. Uh, these tags suck. <laughs> uh, let's just be honest. Uh, my description's kind of okay. Uh, no, it's not. It's too short. It's too short. Like this is Kennedy Space Center. <laughs> I'm just gonna rag on myself for a bit. I hope you enjoyed this like self-flagellation here. It's NASA, and I don't say the word NASA. What the hell is wrong with me? <laughs> At Cape Canaveral, we visit the Kennedy Space Center, which includes a tour of the ground showing off rockets, the VAB, launch pads, mission control, and the space shuttle Atlantis. Um, NASA provides great tour guides for this wonderful attraction in Florida. Okay, why did I just add that sentence? It's got keywords in it. People search NASA, people search tour, people search attraction, people search Florida. Now those are gonna be super competitive spaces, so they might not be the best, it's not long tail and stuff, but it's better than the nothing I had there before. Come on, Ray, get it together. All right, and so with the TubeBuddy plugin installed, one of the things that it would do, but isn't because I suck, is um, it's not showing me ranking on any of these search terms. There's just nothing. Uh, if I were ranking, there would be a green box with a white number in it that would show how I'm ranking in search terms. So um, I'm going to go in here and just nuke some of these that I just know I can't be competitive in. Kennedy. I'm not after the president, okay? Um, yeah, tour? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be competitive there ever. It's not technically in Orlando, so no, don't do that. Space, wow, that's a little vague. Uh, <laughs> um, beautiful, beautiful, what the hell? <laughs> Things to do in Orlando, okay, that's not too bad, that's not too bad, even though it is technically not Orlando. Um, so that's fine, theme parks. It's not really a theme park, I don't know, I don't know. Um, so this is your keyword area here, and it's... Um, it's, uh, hold on, I just want to quickly scroll on chat to make sure there's not problems here. Um, oh, Toby, no worries. No worries. You, you know, you, you got to go when you got to go. Um, so anyways, I'm just trying to fix my tags on this video because I suck at tags. <laughs> I need this help. So I've removed some tags that I know that I'm not going to be competitive in, like, ever, unless I become enormous. If I become, like, one of the top... 500 travel channels will stand a shot at it, but otherwise, no. So uh, I've cleared up some space to add more tags. In the bottom right-hand corner of this box, it shows you how many characters you have left. You can have up to 500 characters in your tags. So I now have room for about, uh, what is it, 161 characters. So now I'm going to use my TubeBuddy tag tools. Now you'll see there's lots of stuff here. If I had the free version, I would only see three tags. But because I have Legend, I have an insanely long list. It's almost too long. Legend is probably more than most people need. A pro list would probably suit you fine. But let's go through and add some things. Like here, Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex Amusement Park. That is a nice long tail keyword. Um, Kennedy Space Center Spaceport. Uh, Saturn V. I don't think we show the Saturn V rocket very much. But we do s show the Space Shuttle Atlantis. Um, we didn't film the rocket launch very well. Kennedy Space Center structure. This is kind of interesting. 
All right, and I'm already over for keywords. I don't think I found anything great here. Um, so you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna remove one just so I'm not over the 500. I'm gonna click on one of these, and with TubeBuddy, this this little um, magnifying glass thing here brings up the keyword explorer. See, TubeBuddy will tell you the truth like a friend should. It is very bad a keyword. <laughs> Search volumes are high, um, but like it's just it it's just no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there are some related ones that might be a little bit better. Uh, so that's cool. What I'm actually, before I do anything there, I'm going to remove some other stuff here, like shuttles, no good. I don't know about rocket. Um, Atlantis, that's just, no, there's like an, a, there's Atlantis in the Bahamas. I'm going to take out Florida. I mean, you know, I'm going to take out the Orlando stuff because this is just not technically Orlando. Destination, yeah, what were you thinking, man? What were you thinking? Okay, so now I've got some room again for like 150 odd characters. Um, and hey, if you guys have suggestions in chat for better keywords I could be using here, feel free. <laughs> clearly I need to help. So let's see here, this isn't great, but I can do uh, Kennedy Space Center Tour. Um, Kennedy Space Center, Florida. Bus tour, yeah, we did the bus tour. This video shows the bus tour. We show some Atlantis, we do. Um, it wasn't in 2018. So, hold on, I haven't done this in a while. Does that add them? No. Just, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where did bus tour go? Oh, there it is. Um, Keyword selected for, let's deselect that, action. Insert in the current video, there we go. So I've deselected this because it's already been inserted, but these ones I'm going to insert into the current video, insert. Check mark, so they've been inserted, there they are. Maybe they'll do a little better, I don't know. Uh, let's see if this got some other good suggestions here. The problem is, is it is just super competitive. Um, let's do that. That oh, it pushes me over. Anyways, you see how it works. If this video was better, if my description, um, oh yeah, Matthew, uh, there is a coupon code. Uh, the coupon code is tied to the Facebook group, so you need to go there to get it. Uh, it's not tied to this video. This video is not sponsored. But if you want to save twenty percent, join the small YouTubers group or small YouTubers boost Facebook group. Check the announcements. We got a code saves you twenty percent on the paid version too, buddy. Um, and there should be an affiliate link in the description for this video. Um, if not, let me know in chat, please. And then maybe I'll share it there. So, anyways, I'm not gonna like you. I'm not gonna make you watch me flounder with uh, the tags here. the The problem is, this is an old video. It didn't have a great name. It didn't have great description. So, I'm not ranking on anything right now. But actually, you know what? There's one that I might be able to rank on, and that's my name. Oops. Helps if I can type. Yeah. No, I'm not even ranking on that. It's just a poor video. Uh, but why is this a poor video? What are some of its flaws? The best practices module over here I like a lot because, like I said, there's so much to remember about, um, uh, you know, about about uh, YouTube that it's crazy. In fact, one of the two buddy things is you can actually have it so that when you're uploading a new video, it actually creates a checklist, or you can borrow someone else's. Daryl Eves and Roberto Blake and a bunch of other people have created checklists um, that you can have at the upload screen that'll remind you, oh, you got to do all these things. This is so many steps. So according to this, I haven't sh shared this video on Twitter. I don't blame me. And remember how I was talking about you can integrate Twitter into. Um, uh, into your YouTube. Uh, so here, there, when you upload, you can just put a checkbox next to the Twitter icon, and when you upload it, it'll tweet for you. I didn't do that because this is before I took YouTube seriously. Um, I have it in a playlist, so that's a good thing. But looking at this best practices, I haven't shared it on Twitter. I haven't replied to a comment, although apparently there is a comment. Uh, let's try a new tab. Not sure if it will display the tab for you if I hop over. It will, cool. And you see, yeah, uh, TubeBuddy's got some stuff happening over here. Okay, it was mentioned on Twitter at least once, that's something. So here we go, somebody commented. They said, great vid guys, and then a star for some reason. 
This was two years ago. I gave it a thumbs up, and that's all I did. Well, thank God for TubeBuddy, because now I know I can heart it, which is good, and I should reply to it. I should. He said something nice. I should say something nice. Thanks. Do, 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 do. Smiley. Reply. And then pin the comment. Like I said, uh, the algorithm, I do firmly believe, rewards you for using all the functions. So now I'm using, on this video, more functions. I replied, I hearted it, and I pinned the comment. Check, check, check. Looks like I never shared this on uh, Reddit. Uh, again, I don't blame myself, but I have created my own subreddit for Vacation Impossible and also for Small YouTubers Boost. Uh, so since I run those, I can't get banned for sharing things there. <laughs> Um, do, 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 do. Small YouTubers boost. Or, no. Eh, okay, fine. Yeah, let's just post it there. It doesn't really matter. There you go. Now it's on Reddit. So thank God for TubeBuddy. My, my video is now on Reddit, where before it was not. And, I mean, hey, if you're great at creating your own checklist and doing these things, like, you know, sort of religiously and, and diligently, then that's great. I'm just not that organized. I need the help. Uh, I haven't added an info card. I haven't captioned it, but I have taken care of these two now uh, from this best practices thing here in TubeBuddy, so it's doing better. Uh, I could go add an info card. Do you guys want to see that? Is that interesting or useful to you? Yeah, you always like and love all your comments. Do you like and love the hate comments? Because I'll give the hate comments a thumbs down, and I'll reply, but I won't hit heart or thumbs up. Especially if it's somebody coming like, hey, let's do sub for sub. I do not want a heart or thumbs up that. I don't want YouTube thinking I'm a part of that mess at all. I am not in that scene. Um, but yeah, you know, um, so it was saying, reply to a comment, heart a comment, add an info card, pin a comment. I've gotten most of this done now. Um, I can, I could tweet about it. I'm not gonna, but I think you kind of get the idea, um, that of some of the features that are here. TubeBuddy has a function where it will help create a thumbnail for you. I've never done this before. Should we do it? Let's do it. Why not? You know, I'm gonna add a quick info card first. I don't even know what I'm gonna put here. Oh, there's a, yeah, I've got a content ID match on this, which is part of why I didn't put a lot of effort into this. Uh, it's because I don't own the whole thing. So there's a couple, um, the owner's cards might appear in some countries instead of your cards. Oh, that's interesting. Fly me uh, to I wanted the you know, moon. If I use somebody else's music, Let I want me to get credit. This was before I had a composer who was writing music for us. Now the rocket sounds here are real. All right. Um, so when it comes to adding info cards, there's a couple strategies. I think the smart one takes more work. For you. The white rocket in front of you is a 19 paper. It doesn't tie in with the mass program. Early but you can still drop off if there's, if there's like a like where your watch drops. Or if it's, it's a style or if they built the floor at Hey buddy, just make sure you don't launch it, okay? Drop the info card. If you're starting to lose the audience, drive them to yeah, a different right. video. Keep them on the platform, keep them on your channel. Hey, there's a map! Yeah, Incoming. It's meant uh, for a lot of people. Oh, what? I don't want to do that research, yeah. but I do. It's meant for more than one. It only contains three people. Yeah, it's a tight fit. Yeah. So we're at a six-minute mark. I'm just going to go in and add a Apollo 10. It was the only Apollo mission um, launched from this. I don't know, maybe. What will I link to? If you're watching the Space Center, what might you want to watch? Maybe a playlist? I don't know. None of this stuff really relates. I don't know. Ice bucket challenge. There you go. A charity thing. Why not? Everyone likes that. We did the ice bucket challenge challenge at the Grand Canyon. Um, and I know it's old, but whatever. This video is old. I'm just trying to show you how it works. I'm not trying to make this video take off. Can't hear you over your video. Oh. <laughs> John, did you go to watch our video? And now you're having here. John's John's trolling you guys. He's, he's playing around. He, kn he knows how to use things. <laughs> he does not need your troubleshooting help. Um, it's like, you know, he's pointing out inconsistency in things I say. I say, you go watch my video, uh, and then you can't watch this video, and you're like, oh. anyways. Uh, so that's adding a card. But that wasn't what we were going to be all about. We were going to be about... Let's try creating a thumbnail with TubeBuddy. I've never done this before. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> so let's see how intuitive this is. Uh, what type of background would you like for the thumbnail? 
Um, I don't know. Um, and what do you guys think? Still frame from the video? Oh, then I have to go find the still frame. And boom, there's a still frame. It's not bad. Um, add a layer to the thumbnail, a text, an image. I think I've got just the image. Wonder where this is gonna. Oh, look at that! This this is fascinating. Are you guys able to see this? I want to make sure that this is still. Yeah, this is still displaying. What are you guys thinking of this? Um, da 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 da. Upload. Oh, wait, this is. All oh, right, no, I'm already here. Browse. Boo, 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 boo. No, I don't want that. I want it from the desktop. I recently, from Talent Z, got a little graphic me, which is very exciting. Let's put him in there. Uh, click image to add. <laughs> He's huge. How do I make this smaller? Oh, good. And you know what? It's constraining the aspect ratio. That's nice. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe over here. These people never consented to be in this video. <laughs> maybe I should cover them up. Mm. Yeah, cover cover them up. That guy's face. There you go. <laughs> I didn't get waivers signed. <laughs> this is funny to me. Yeah, the new avatar. Oh, that's funny. Um... Yeah, well, I mean, and, and so like we could do, we could type text. I mean, I've already got the text from uh, from the still image, so I think that's fine. I can add shapes. I can add an emoji. I'm not a big fan of emojis on uh, on thumbnails, so that's just me. Look at this. You can you can do the opacity, the brightness, the contrast. Contrast is at zero. <laughs> I don't even. I can't even. Uh, I'm gonna just use that. As, I'm gonna use it stock. I think. Uh, it'd be nice if I could type in the number. There we go, back to zero. So that's what it is. Is it's the layer that I'm. Oh yeah, you need to lock the layer. Selected layer. So if I click over here, well, that's interesting. This seems pretty intuitive to me. This isn't bad. I'm I'm gonna do it. This is preview. And so like this is how it would look. I I think that's better than what I had, don't you? Emojis are great for targeting children. You know that makes sense. That makes sense. The junior member of our group has an emoji uh, t-shirt and pillow and stuff that he likes quite a lot. So, all right. Well, that's a little better than it was. Let's save and publish it. Are you sure you want to publish this thumbnail? Yes, I do. <laughs> I don't know if that'll make a difference, but I think we all learned something here. If you didn't already know about the thumbnail generator, this is cool. Uh, please reload this page to see your changes. You can download. Oh, you can download it. That's not bad. Uh, due to the browser and YouTube caching, it may take a moment. Yeah. Hey, that is that's solid, man. Every day I'm seeing something new. But look, it's updated the page. The best practice is here on this video now. It's just saying share the thing on Twitter, which I don't feel like doing just now. Um, and this will refresh later. But there you go. That is that is that. Was that useful, guys? Was that a, what is that that a good way to spend some time? What was the name of that person I was going to do? It was a Pauline T. I didn't forget about you, Pauline. I like Pauline from uh, Mario. I thought she was a snappy dresser. Although Rosalina's a pretty nice dresser, too. I like her asymmetric hairstyle. Stylish. That looks like you with the eye there, your top result. Ooh, en français. Je parle un petit peu. So don't expect much. Okay. Trance. Floor music, Olympics, bars, pumpkin. Just looking at the related searches here, it's kind of interesting. Uh, tags, piano, bow, cover, song, acoustic. I don't know if that's what your channel's about. Hey, uh, okay, yeah. So it's a musical channel, and it's about um, it's about covers, and that's cool. And my pigeon French, and probably you know. If I have an accent, it's probably in Quebecois, which in many parts of the world is not popular. I had a couple bad experiences uh, with my pigeon French uh, in Paris. I was uh, I was there uh, with uh, my girlfriend uh, at the time, and we were on the Champs Elysees, and I was going to get a nice uh, a nice like foot long hot dog, 
and that sounds like not really special right but they put fresh melted mozzarella on it which is awesome and so I, I, I was thinking back on my French classes and I was like, I'm going to go order, I'm going to order it in French and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to impress the girl, right? So I go up to this hot dog vendor and I've, I've for like 20 minutes, I've been practicing in my head, what am I going to say, what am I going to say? And I get up there and I'm like, oh, je vais en de blah, 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 blah. I, you know, I order it in what I think is hopefully properly constructed French. And they come back like, oh, would you like a Coke with that? And I'm like, oh yeah, sure, you know, two please. Okay, fine. You know, wait around for a few minutes and then they then they hand it to me and they're like, oh, enjoy your hot dog. I'm like, thanks. And I turn around and, and, and there's the girl and she's like trying not, to, she's trying to cover a laugh. And I'm like, oh God, when did we switch to English? Oh. <laughs> after my first after my first attempt to speak French we switched to English and I didn't even notice I was like oh god that was embarrassing <laughs> um but the guy was totally nice and I mean that's one of the things um sidebar here but like traveling to places like Paris or wherever is if you sometimes I find not so much in Germany but in France if you make an effort to speak the language they respect that you've made the effort and you get better service as a result so when I was going to use their underground their subway I tried to use French to order my ticket and the, the, the ticket seller person there was like, oh, uh, you know, vous parlez anglais. And I'm like, mais oui. Uh, and so um, then we switched to English, and she was really nice and helpful. And she was like, oh, you want to go down there? And, you know, here's where your connection is. And you have a great day. Welcome to Paris. I'm like, that's a fantastic experience because I made an effort, right? <clears throat> My friend John, who was right behind me in line, needed to buy a ticket as well. Uh, but he wasn't listening that much, but he noticed that he knew he she spoke English. So he walked up and just started with English. And she was cold as ice because he didn't make the effort. That's just one person. You don't want to generalize, but it's a funny story. And I think making the effort goes a long way when you travel. Um, just two other quick Paris stories. Uh, just so we're not totally boring you with YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Uh, just to mix it up a bit, I was uh, I went to Paris in 2005 and 2010. In 2005, when I went, I um, I was at the Eiffel Tower, and over the Seine from there is the um, the Trocadero, and they have this fountain. Um, so there's water, and people were swimming in it, and it was hot, and I was in like pants, and I didn't bring swim shorts, and I'm like, oh, I would love to swim in that. I didn't know you could do this. So when I went back in 2010, it was going to be my big revenge. <laughs> I wore my swimming trunks that day. It was a little cloudy, but I'm like, I'm committed. I don't care if I'm cold. I'm getting in there. And large portions of the Trocadero had been uh, fenced off. And the water was like green. with and So I don't know what was going on. It was a restoration or something maybe. But we're walking up and there was this picture I wanted to take. And uh, anyways, the security guard comes at me and starts yelling at me. So I guess I had gone through where fencing was supposed to be. I don't know. Um, and I was trying to apologize in every way I could you know, just we désolé, you know, whatever. Uh, um, and he just, um, uh, oh, questions about the two buddy price tag. Um, I think it starts at like nine bucks. So 20% off kicks it down to six and change something like that for the lower version. And then it gets, it gets, it goes, it goes up from there. Um, and, uh, yeah, so there's various discounts you can get, um, depending on how large your channel is. If you pay for a whole year, at once then you get an additional discount on top of that but um anyways yeah so i and the guy just like there was nothing i could say to make him stop yelling at me so i just ran away because <laughs> he clearly wanted me to leave <clears throat> i was trying to do it respectfully but um yeah i just like right on my face basically in terms of the language uh, i just left um and so yeah that was uh, <laughs> that was fun um i thought i had another Oh, just a, a, a thing that I did. Um, I'm not totally proud of, but I was trolling. I was basically dared, because um, you hear about in Paris, like the, the service industry is a little slow because it's like a European lifestyle. And some people take it to be like, oh, the stereotypical rude French waiter. And we were wanting to test the stereotype because we didn't believe it was real. Uh, and the waiter I had at the Hard Rock Cafe, his name was Homeboy and he was amazing. But the night before that, when we tried going to the Hard Rock, it was too busy. There was a huge wait. We're like, why is this popular in Paris? We thought... Parisians hated everything American um, or English or whatever. Uh, but there was a huge wait. So we went to a restaurant like next door to the Hard Rock. And um, so anyways, I had this crazy idea of testing the patience of our waiter. And I'm not proud of it. But basically what I decided to do was I ordered Vend Angleterre. <laughs> so I was in Paris and I ordered English wine. <laughs> we didn't see him for 45 minutes and I had it coming. <laughs> <laughs> do not ask for english wine in paris because the wine in paris is better i don't like wine so i'm not a wine guy and i know this okay pauline t 
Um, it's interesting. The banner that you have here is nice. I like it. I think that the... Maybe the contra... I don't know. I, I, I can see where there would be some challenges because the image isn't really popping in the background, but if you increase the contrast, then your text might be harder to see. I'm not sure. Um, so really, my only real advice here, because cover an original song, that's good. I mean, it's English, but, you know, I guess it translates well enough, is um, look at this on a couple of different platforms because you've got some design at the bottom that's being cut off on desktop. So what anyone can do who's concerned about their cover uh, art is you can just Google um, sort of YouTube cover art dimensions. And there's a lot of like little templates out there that you can just get for free uh, that will actually show you the various dimensions uh, at different platforms, the app, the mobile browser, the desktop, a tablet, a TV, whatever. Uh, and so you can see, and if you're using Photoshop, for example, you could make that like a semi-transparent layer just so you can place things against it. And then like the core stuff you want seen should be in the smallest box there is. And then anything else, make sure that an element isn't only partially um, crossing a line unless that's part of your design aesthetic. So this looks really good. I think you've got a good design. It's just the style at the bottom looks a little, um, a little out of place. And so I'm imagining that's part of a larger graphic. And so we would see something that would put it into a better context at the bottom. I'm just not seeing it there. You got a link to Instagram and Twitter. The icons are there. That's fantastic. Um, so you've got a three minute uh, song. Um, it is original song, which is nice. It's serving as your channel trailer. Uh, for a musical channel, I think that makes great sense. I think that's smart. My French is too rusty for me to help you with this description. I'm sorry. And you've got uploads. So again, I think a uh, line for popular. And uh, I think, let's check your playlists. I'm going to guess before I click on it that you have one playlist for covers and one for original songs. Or maybe you only, because it says I wrote a song six. So I imagine that's either your sixth original song or part six of watching the evolution of a song being written. Let's see what we've got. Original songs in English covers. Cool. All right. Um, well, maybe I'll watch the English covers one day when I'm not doing a live stream. So that's cool. Um, original songs, English covers. That's great. Those two playlists put on your homepage is my advice. And so you would have like uploads, um, you know, original, uh, you know, those two playlists and then popular uploads underneath that, that would be, uh, that would flush out your layout a little bit, get more things on here. Um, it's interesting. You have popular channels and I'm learning something in just this moment. It says popular channels, but look at this. It's music related. It's not putting up like a gaming channel. I don't see PewDiePie here, although I think he's probably not on popular channels anymore, but you get the idea. I'm not seeing Markiplier or whoever. Um, so it's interesting. I think there's gradations. It knows that you're music, but it is not flipping over to related. That's interesting. More to learn about that. Let's check your channel analytics. No channel tags. So at the very least, you should have like French, English, cover, music, song, original song as your channel tags. Just go in and throw it in there. Um, takes, takes two seconds. You could benefit from it for a long time. You can check the about page, but it's going to be in French. Hey, it's not just in French. Hey, you can find on my channel covers of artists I love and original song too. Well, I can't help you with the French, but I can help you with the English. The I should be capitalized. Um, and an artist should be plural, so it should be an S on the end of that. Um, otherwise, I think you're good. Uh, I'm, I assume you're saying the same thing there in French. I would drop the hey. Nobody's searching the word hey. It's conversational. It's just eating up space for you. And talk if you can talk a little bit more about why you do it. Uh, you know, you believe that music can have a healing effect or that it's the, you know, it's the spice of life or uh, you're just passionate about music or maybe you have a personal background with music. Maybe you had a music teacher that inspired you or, um, you know, you find there's a meditative quality to music or something. Um, you talk, you know, flush it out just a little bit. Maybe talk about why this is what you do. Why do you care about it? What does it mean to you? And then people will maybe care about it too. Uh, all right, let's see what's going on here. I might actually have the prices for TubeBuddy here somewhere. Just give me a second. Mm, no, I don't have it that handy, sorry. Anyways, it's easy to find. Uh, I'll leave it to you guys. You don't need me to Google things for you. 
That's not the greatest use of our time together, I don't think. No offense. The planet. The planet. That's interesting. Your logo is kind of similar to JBCTRs. All right, the planet. Let's check you out. I am curious. I want to know what that's about. Is this like... It could be almost anything. It could be like an environmental thing, maybe. Yeah, that is a problem. Because, <laughs> uh, of course, the planet, not not uh, super unique searchability. Yeah, it's getting a very bad score. Uh, but let's search by channel. I mean, it's your channel name. Don't worry too much about that. Um, wow. Uh, not seeing the icon here. Thomas, what's Thomas doing there? <laughs> Here you are. There it is. That's the icon, I think. Yeah, the planet. So pretty far down. Um, so that's a thing to consider. You got a little over 200 subscribers, um, 54 videos. So the the icon is fairly distinct. Uh, I don't know that I have much to add to the icon. Uh, let's see. Hello, guys. Our channel was created by a group of friends who recently discovered the magic of video editing. Our goal is to... So, you got a personal story there, which is fine. I think it should be later in the description. I think you should keep it. Don't get me wrong. I would drop hello, guys. That adds no value. Uh, I, I think, you know, our channel was created by... That's good. Uh, you got your goal in there, which is great. Whatever it is, it kind of truncates for me. Uh, put that later in the description because I don't know what your channel's about. Uh, it came up in search, and I have no idea. And also, because the planet is kind of a very competitive search, I would also put the words the planet in there. So instead of our channel was created, how about just the ch the planet? Well, actually, that the planet channel was created by a group of friends, something like that, maybe. Because if you say the planet was created by a group of friends, they're going to be like, conspiracy theory? What? Creation? What? Um, so let's uh, let's dive into the planet. I'm very curious. Is it sci-fi? Is it what? What is this? The Planet Tech and Gaming. Okay, there we go. Now I know what it is. You got a Discord server over to the side there. See earlier in the video for my Twitter rant. Get Twitter, plug it in. Uh, okay, so you've got uploads. Again, I would suggest popular videos should go there. You have related channels. That's interesting. And so I'm seeing here Tech, NVIDIA. That's interesting. But also Gamer. That's interesting to me because you're straddling to adjacent niches but they are a little different uh they're related but they're different tech and gaming and somehow the algorithm's okay with you doing that that's cool because it's suggesting tech and gaming related channels that's good i would recommend activating the suggested channels awesome channels box i forget what the default setting is mine i think is called awesome channels um and just link it to a couple other channels you care about maybe the designer of the games that you play if there's no particular youtuber you enjoy just so that you've got the feature enabled which the algorithm appreciates uh, and it shows people in the community you support others uh on youtube which are good things um i think is a good idea so yeah let's see do you have playlists hey you got some playlists so take a couple and throw them on the on the home page as well. So you have at least four rows, I would recommend. Um, Mace Windu destroys TW in 13 seconds. Swaggle. <laughs> like Klingon or something. I, I mean, obviously it's Star Wars. I mean, I get, I get what that is um, to a degree. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of okay. The text could pop a little bit more. Maybe... Um, Maybe the fill on the text up it by like 5, 10, 15 percent could actually make a difference there, make it re more readable. Um, other than that, your thumbnails look pretty good. One thing to point out on thumbnail number five over here, the BlizzCon one, and this is a good note for everyone when they're designing thumbnails. Remember, the time code goes in the bottom right-hand corner. So if you're having an important icon or text that goes into the bottom right-hand corner, at certain resolutions, it will be obscured and covered. So if you want to have some white space or something, the bottom right-hand corner of a thumbnail is a good idea. You'll notice in his other thumbnails, there's nothing critical in the bottom right-hand corner. And it says uh, free for WoW subscribers. It's probably okay. It's not critical text. This is going to make a huge difference. Um, so in that case, it's probably okay. But it you know, could be a little better in that regard. Analytics. Gaming, fun, health, sports, technology, style, funny, comedy, movies, trending, video. 
good and bad here. <laughs> I would drop fun, health, sports. I don't, I'm not seeing clues that your channel is about that. I would drop style, I would drop movies, I would drop ten, trending, and I would absolutely drop video. Uh, nobody's searching the word video on YouTube. If they are, they're going to get tons of useless results. That having been said, I think you can add some things there. Star Wars? You know, I think I saw some Red, Dem Red Dead Redemption 2. Very competitive right now, but, you know, that's probably more accurate than trending. So, I think that the, your, your channel keywords could be a little bit more focused, a little bit more accurate. Uh, let's check your about page. Ooh, okay, there's 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 a, okay. You know what, there's actually a lot here. It just needs to be reordered, that's all. Our goal is to provide you with quality and entertaining and, and entertainment time. I don't know if that sentence says anything, to be completely blunt, um, because I don't think anyone is out to provide people with something that's not quality and not entertaining, unless, of course, it's educational, but education can be entertaining as well. Or, I mean, if you're making a meditative video, entertainment might not be the thing, if it's like trying to help you relax or sleep, but it really doesn't, it's, it doesn't say anything um, that much. That sentence, I think you could lose. Uh, we aim to bring you all sorts of videos regarding gaming and technology suitable for all ages, and we really hope you enjoy our content. You don't need to say our content. I think you could just end that with, we really hope you enjoy. I don't think people search the word content on YouTube. Please don't hesitate to reach us through the comments for feedback on our content as well. As, and again, you don't need to say our content there for feedback as well as what you would like to see. Join us discard disclaimer, see any copyright material. You will delete it immediately. No questions asked before reporting it. That makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's interesting. It makes me think like you're I don't know. This is this could be a couple of things. That might just be there out of an abundance of caution or because someone told you to include something like that. And if that's the case, then okay, I understand. Uh, if this is because you're knowingly uprate, uploading things you know you don't have the rights to that are problematic and you're just trying to avoid a strike, that makes me less comfortable. You're Portugal. Uh, uh, that's, that's interesting. Uh, I haven't spoken to a lot of people from Portugal in the group, so that's kind of cool. You don't have your email here, so you talk about contact you, but you don't include an email. Uh, I would not put the email in the description. I would put it where you can actually have the email somebody clicks on to display it so that spiders and bots can't collect it. Um, yeah, I don't know that I have a lot to add to this channel. So, And I'm not sure that you're still here in chat, so with apologies, I'm going to move on. <laughs> oh yeah, the planet said someday you'll review my channel. Two... It's too small at this moment. Don't want to waste your time. It's not a waste of time, man. I mean, and that's one of the things where, you know, you try to help people and you put it out on the internet. You never know who you're going to end up helping. You're going to, you know, there, you, you could change someone's life. You might not. But I might make a suggestion that could prompt somebody to make a little change that might be the little turnkey that makes all the difference on their channel or something else. So um, don't worry about wasting my time in that regard. Um you know, uh, there's, and admittedly, you know, there's things in the Facebook group that waste my time sometimes, like when people are fighting with each other and calling themselves names. That is a straight up waste of time. Don't do it. But I mean, if it's ever about asking for help or advice or whatever, um, don't, don't feel bad about uh, that. It's not a waste of time. And it's up to people what they want to spend their time on. I made a choice. It's fine. I don't feel bad about that. I think it was time well spent. The Garcias, you're up next. It was auto-completing with something Halloween party. Let me just make sure I get the right... Yeah, okay, so people kissing. All right. So, the Garcias is scoring as a fair search term. Related searches. Brothers, Halloween party, Nickelodeon. Curious about that. Sisters, Beyblade. Interesting. Boxing, twins, music, family show, TV series, comedy. There's a lot of different things going on there. So many subjects. Uh, just searching the Garcias, your channel comes up first, but none of your videos do on the first page, so that's interesting, for whatever that's worth. 275 subscribers, 13 videos. Welcome to my channel. I don't want to sound negative here, but people stop saying welcome to my channel in your description. Everyone knows it's a channel, and if you have a channel that doesn't isn't welcoming to people, then you're probably not on YouTube. So don't say welcome to my channel. It's a waste of space. I don't mean to say it too harshly, but I see it so much. Um... 
I'm a young mom of a beautiful toddler boy and a beautiful baby girl. I have a huge, crazy, dramatic family, dot, dot, dot. You want an apostrophe in I'm. And I, yeah, it might sound like I'm being picky about grammar and stuff, but it's one of those things where if you do the little things right, it looks more professional. And whether people are consciously aware of it or not, they'll respect you more and they'll be more inclined to check you out. Um, that's my advice. Uh, I don't always follow my own advice. Uh, I often go by Cowman in a variety of places of the internet. And I do that stupid thing from way back in the old days of the internet where every other letter is a different case. Uh, but it actually came to sort of a design aesthetic, and so I've kept it, but it feels silly sometimes. And people do make fun of me sometimes for it, and I don't blame them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is a family channel. I'm not really well-versed in that genre. I'm not a fan myself, personally, so I uh, might be limited in the feedback I can give you. I would Normally, you know, I try to rewrite the beginning of people's descriptions, but I'm not sure that I can do a better job here. Other than just saying, drop, welcome to my family channel, you or welcome to my channel, you've got more important things to put there. So, just saying. Um, instead of saying, I have a huge crazy family, you could say the Garcias are a huge crazy family. Crazy dramatic family. Just because then you get more alignment with the, the Garcias, and so if somebody searches the Garcias, you might be more likely to have some of your videos also pop underneath. Just a thought. Okay... Uh, one thing about that, that profile picture, um, presumably it's about the couple. And so you kissing is part of why that's the image. But the focus, the center point of the image is just under the guy's chin. Like that's where the center of the image is. So his sweater is fully like half of that image. So if it's supposed to be about the couple, if you can recenter it so that like the kiss is in the center maybe might be better. Um, those kinds of profile pictures are not my personal favorite, so I don't have huge opinions, but that's just a general design thing. Your banner, you've got like a marble look to the background. The text is pretty good. It's large. New videos weekly. I've talked about this in previous live streams. I am not a big fan of putting your upload schedule in your banner. This isn't a, a strict schedule because it's just one video per week. It's not like a, you know, every Tuesday or whatever, so that's better. Um... And people disagree with me on this, and reasonable people can disagree about that. Um, but my personal belief is I don't think somebody's going to be more inclined to watch or subscribe or click on your stuff because they know you do videos at a certain frequency. But some people say they do, so take that with a grain of salt. Uh, you've got a couple pictures off to the side there. Uh, obviously, your children and probably you and your partner, and that's cool. Um... My one concern here is just, again, take that second and go on your phone, go to your page, uh, uh, go to your, you know, your channel, and just see where it's cutting it off. And ask yourself, is that where I want that to be cut off? Because you might, from a balancing of the image, maybe you want one picture on one side, one on the other of the, the Garcia's thing. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, so just something to think about with the cropping. You've got Instagram there. You might want to capitalize the I in Instagram. Uh, see earlier in this video for my rant about Twitter and plugging that into your YouTube. Uh, so what's serving as your channel trailer is a six-minute video about labor and delivery, uh, which is interesting. I would recommend a channel trailer. Get 60 seconds of your best stuff put together as a sizzle reel and pop that up there is my suggestion. Got popular channels, and it's interesting. There's a family channel here, but like food and BuzzFeed, crafts, kind of all over the place. So I don't, I don't think that YouTube really knows what you're about yet. I would put in, um, you know, recommended channels. Uh, activate that that box there, uh, and uh, you know maybe it's just a couple companies you like. I see you shop at Ikea. Maybe it's the Ikea channel. Uh, if there's other channels you watch and enjoy or are related to yours, that would be a good thing. Uh, so you have uh, uploads. Again, um, I'm going to check your playlists. Oh, channel has no playlists. Not great. Um, yeah, create a, a couple playlists. I mean, like, let's see if I can, you know, you could have family time playlist. You could have a shopping playlist, a makeup playlist, Q&A uh, playlist, a pregnancy playlist, something. Make playlists. All of your videos should be in at least one playlist. Absolutely 100%. Playlists are an often ignored, but can be an important part of an opportunity to get watch time and searchability and things like that. So yeah, uh, for here, make a couple playlists and then also popular uploads. So you have at least four lines. I've been saying that a lot today. Pardon the repetition. Channelytics. Hmm. Vlog. 
vo I'm, I'm assuming that's a typo. I think it's supposed to be vlogger. It's vulgar. Uh, family, funny, pregnant, pregnancy. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I, I wonder about that typo, though. It might be intentional. You might be trying to actually capture people who have, who have mistyped vlogger. And maybe that works for you. I don't know. Check your, uh, check your traffic sources to see. Because you got over 4,000 views. Check your traffic sources to see what kind of search terms you're doing well in. If that is coming up, maybe leave it. If it's not coming up, I would correct it or remove it. Uh, thanks for tuning in, Matt. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, you could maybe bulk it up a little bit more, but I think you're kind of doing okay in the tags there. Uh, about. Um, after people, the W in we should be capitalized as a new sentence. We currently are expecting our second child. Which, that doesn't, from, you describe a toddler boy and a beautiful baby girl, and then you talk about expecting a second child. The math on that doesn't hold up. I'm thinking some of this got updated, but some wasn't. Um, I suspect that either that's from before your second child, or you're expecting a third. Or there's something here I don't understand, like a Brady Bunch situation going on. Um, this looks fine. Um... You've got a link here to your social media uh, just for Instagram. So a couple of things. For one thing, having social media, but then only one social media underneath. You could have just said Instagram. Um, but the other thing is, is that's not clickable, but you do have Instagram down here, and that is clickable. So I would just remove that from the description because it's, it, it exists right below, and it exists up in your banner. Uh, it's duplication. And uh, you've got some hashtags here. And so as I mentioned earlier, the hashtags on a channel description don't function as hashtags. Uh, but they do on videos. So in your description on your videos, have at least three hashtags for every single one. Just three, no more than three. Uh, but I would say remove them from your channel description and instead put them in sentence form. Our vlog, or we, this is this is a mommy vlog where our, we vlog uh, tutorials and other things, something like that. Um, and you're probably already using some of those words. I'm seeing vlogs up there above, so it might not even need to be done. Uh, and uh, as I said, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. <laughs> Let's see who's next. The planet, Matt Garcia's. I have no idea how to use Pinterest. I just use it for inspiration. Well, that means you're using it better than I am. Uh, my thought about Pinterest is basically I created an account in the name of my channel, and when you upload a new video, you have the opportunity. There's there's a bunch of social links you can click on to share to, and so I just share them. I created a couple boards, one for travel videos, one for podcast or something else, retro gaming charity something. I just pop it in there, and then things happen that I don't understand, and I get a little bit of traffic. Pals lives life. Assuming I'm saying that right. Not only did you catch me live, if you're still around, you have to watch me review your channel. And if not, there's always the replay. Uh, I think I've seen you comment on my videos before, uh, and it's always been very nice and positive, so thank you for that. I, I, I do appreciate that, and I do kind of take notice. Uh, let's see here. So it's a, it's a good name, uh, relatively searchable. All of the videos are yours. So this is, a, this is a good sort of brand thing that you've got sort of locked down. Review, Halo Beauty, brown skin, makeup, uh, makeup deals, Beauty Kiwi, POC. So, okay, got some, got some stuff going on there. That's good. It's pretty clear what your channel is about. Uh, that's picture view. That's fine. Um, Looking just at the picture, people might not know what it's about, but uh, it could be sort of like a personal branding thing. And you got you got 2,000 subscribers, so it seems like it's a little personality-driven, so that's okay. Um, beauty, makeup is my hobby, and I'm trained in science and engineering as a biomedical engineer. I'm very passionate about that. That's cool. <laughs> um, you could drop off is my hobby, and the word and. Makeup, beauty, and I'm trained, maybe something like that. Uh, but I mean, this is this is fine. There's a couple extraneous words, but not really. Uh, you could hyphenate instead of I am. It could be I apostrophe M just to get those one extra character space. Uh, because you're passionate about, is that a tease? Or, or would more information be more enticing? I'm not sure. Let's dive into the channel. Pause the video there. Uh... 
That was about a nice Viking beard for your avatar. Very funny, John. I don't understand the beard thing, but whatever makes people happy, I guess. Okay, uh, so you've got a 12-minute video serving as your channel trailer. A little long, but that's okay. It could be showing what you do. Um, yeah, I mean, I would suggest possibly making an actual proper channel trailer. However, I don't even have one, so... Um, pal. Yeah, so your banner here is interesting. It's a little hard to read in a couple of ways. For example, before the L's, there's this sort of swooshy calligraphy cursive something it looks like it's like a, a a superscript lowercase c followed by like a lowercase e that's large or a, a, an uppercase c when really it's just styling um but it is thinner than the lives for example so um i think that uh and also the, this kind of a font is can be a little hard to read on the banner it's okay um there's a little graphic thing here where it looks like some of the background image is repeating itself. And there's this like kind of invisible line. I it looks like a tiling effect. I'm suspecting that's not intentional, but I don't know, this blue thing over here crosses over it without the duplication. So I'm not sure what the intent is there. Um, I'm wondering if that's like some makeup thing. I'm not sure. So, um, and also some of the styling drops below the banner when there's a lot of space above the text. Uh, um, <laughs> cool tech, and we'll see if I get to you before I run out of time today. Because um, I imagine I'm going to have to wrap it up soon. I've been going longer than I thought I could, but we'll see how long I can go. Um, and again, my concern here with this banner really primarily is that it's going to get cropped on the sides on other platforms. So, you know, if you've got a smart TV, look at your channel on your smart TV. If you got, you know, check it out on your phone, check it out on a tablet, check it out on a couple different devices, whatever you happen to have, and just see how it looks. And if you're happy with it, then fine. If not, Google a template and really consider all the boxes and uh, where things get cut off. So it looks good at all resolutions. And again, personally, I think a boxier font, a thicker font, might be easier to read. This is okay though, don't get me wrong. Uh, you've got some social links over here. You've got Instagram, Twitter, and blog, or it looks like, blog spot. That's what that is, okay. That's cool, so you got a blog, that's great. Um, so, uh, and I'm looking at your description here, and so it looks like you've got pretty meaty descriptions, which is probably a big part of how you got to your 2,000 subscribers as well, because meaty, just give that algorithm things to eat. Just give something to chew on, lots of data. That's what it wants. And so if, if your descriptions read like blog posts, then that actually helps your channel. So you're doing well there. Uploads, popular uploads, recommended playlists. It's kind of interesting. Um, I think that, yeah, recommended playlists is a little vague. Uh, I wonder if that could be labeled in a way that's a little bit more, or is that an automatic function where it's like YouTube recommends playlists from your channel? Maybe. If it is an automatic thing, I would go in and instead make your own that's curated. Uh, and then label it as such, maybe? I don't know. I think it's probably okay. Um, I'm definitely seeing now the pressed eyeshadows thumbnail showing me those things that are, um, yeah, sort of like the makeup removal pads or application things that are kind of floating up here. Um, on desktop, it's not clear that that's what they are. So your banner doesn't really tell me what your channel is about. So if you scaled those down to make them smaller, throw in like a lipstick or a brush or something else, uh, then it would be more a palette maybe. That might be a little big, I don't know. Uh, that might be a little bit more apparent right away that it's that, that makeup is part of what you do. Small YouTuber Army Playlist. That's interesting. You might want to capitalize the word playlist there. If you're a small YouTuber and I subscribe to you, I have added one of your videos to this list. No way, that's awesome. That is fantastic. It's interesting you do that, but you don't have uh, recommended channels. Um, maybe you just didn't know um, about that function because clearly you're supporting other YouTubers. I know you support my channel. I appreciate that. Um, so that's uh, that's kind of interesting. Um, but the other interesting thing is it says, if you're a small YouTuber and I subscribe to you, I've added one of your videos to this list, but I do see that the three most recent are actually your videos. I'm not sure if that's intentional or not. Um, I do think that the first video makes a lot of sense though, because it's talking about YouTube itself, but then it's like a brush cleaner and an eyeshadow thing. Um, maybe they were collabs, I don't know. Um, I kind of want to look through this and see. Um, 
different batches of codes of subculture. Oh, wait, oh it's a palette thing. Um, so again, I'm wondering if this is curated to the degree that it was intended. Little Village Homestead, I've heard of them. Um, interesting, interesting. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna click on this playlist and see what comes up. Because I bet I'm not getting the whole picture. Yeah, quite a lot of different channels here interspersed with some of your own videos. I think if the videos of yours are about YouTube, then that would make good sense to include them here. But the ones that are about makeup, I think would be better just included in makeup related playlists. But this is a really cool idea you've got here. Um, and like Marley December, I see you've got like a what, like five videos there uh, and then also interspaced between. Um, but it's a really cool idea. Yeah. Oh, that's a that's an interesting thought. I wonder if you know, more people could do that. That'd be all right. <laughs> uh, okay, just making sure everything's working here. Channelytics. Beauty science. Okay, right because of your your education. Uh, ingredient analysis, POC, DIY, makeup review kids that's interesting i didn't see anything too kid related on your channel from what i saw but maybe it's a deeper dive there uh, but you're using some keywords there very effectively i think so that's pretty good i mean me personally i think that there's a lot of channels that do similar things to what i'm seeing they might not do it the way you do it but it, people won't know that until they watch a video um and so just thinking about your unique background about uh, a science and engineering biomedical engineer um, thinking about your competitive advantage with that education behind you, the science of makeup, the, you know, uh, the biomedical aspect of like, um, of that, I think could be more unique. And so you might be able to niche onto that and really, oh, that's, it's Scouse Mouse is a related channel. That's interesting. Um, and he's one of our moderators. So it's, um, yeah, that's, uh. And um, yeah, you know what? It's interesting. The display uh, has gone back to the um, disabled polymer that I'm looking at here. So it looks a little different. Anyways, uh, adding again your email, but masking it is a good idea, uh, especially as a makeup person. Uh, if a company might be interested, if you know Kylie Jenner or some other bloody person I don't know about uh, wants to send you some free samples or something, um, then that is probably generally their preferred way of contacting someone. So having that up there might be a good idea, um, especially as your view count, subscriber count in continues to increase. I noticed that you've been at, you joined YouTube around the same time I decided to take YouTube seriously. So um, the subscriber count that you have for the time that you've been on the platform is actually really impressive. Your growth rate is really good. Um, so yeah, you talk about your personal story here. Uh, so I think that's really good. Um, yeah, my, 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 I guess my overarching thought is um, your particular background can give you a really unique spin on things and, and maybe have a playlist about something like the science of makeup. Uh, I think that would be really interesting. Uh, we've got quite a bit of here. Diet and fitness, healthy recipes, side-by-side -side product comparisons. That's a cool idea. Um, you got a lot of really good stuff going on here. So I don't know that I can add a whole lot more value than what I've said so far, but uh, cool. Hopefully some of that was useful. All right, going back. Who's next? Who's next? The planet said, this guy rocks. Pretty solid work. Thank you, the planet. You're awesome too. I have that question about tags. I know hashtags can't have spaces. So should the tags on Tumblr, YouTube have spaces or not? Looking at one of your videos would be great for tags. Yeah, and so we did do that. Um, so there, yeah, this question that, um, that pals this, this channel uh, had about hashtags. We want to understand that hashtags and keywords are actually separate things and they operate a little differently. So what a hashtag is, is it's the pound sign immediately before some characters, no spaces. And so the hashtag is, it, it came out of Twitter and basically it was a shortcut to search something. So by putting this, the pound sign in front of a word, it made it a clickable link that if you clicked on it, it would search the word that followed the pound sign. Um, and so that's what a hashtag is. A keyword is 
um, metadata that goes behind the scenes in something. Uh, so like on a web page, it would be in your HTML, uh, in your videos, it's in the, the keyword section and your channel, it's your channel keywords. Um, and those have evolved over time that now they can have spaces. Uh, like I was describing earlier for your channel keywords, you put them in quotation marks or separate them by a comma and you can have multiple words with spaces, but you can't have spaces in hashtags, uh, because it does, it, it doesn't know where to stop basically. Uh, and so they are different things. And hashtags are evolving because um, like on Twitter, uh, if there's a way to make fun of something, people will find it. And so they make fun of it. So like hashtag and the word is hashtag <laughs> um, or uh, things like that. It's like hashtag unnecessary hashtag. And, you know, uh, and, and it's also, you know, is bled into our language. I was I was on a I was on a train or something and I heard some teenager or something be like, Oh yeah, you know that guy. Uh, he was. He was. He, I think we're talking sports or something. It was like, yeah, they didn't win, but they tried really hard. Hashtag respect. <coughs> that was years ago. It's much more common now. But at the time, I was like, <laughs> you're funny, and not in a complimentary way, but whatever. He just sounded funny saying it that way. So, um, it's yeah, it's important to understand sort of the difference. So on YouTube, the hashtags exist in your description, um, and only three of them are really functional uh, per video. So keep that in mind. Hashtags have no function in the channel description at this time. YouTube can always change things. Um, and then, yeah, the keywords exist, uh, exist in that in that in those keyword boxes that I talked about and showed earlier. Tumblr is a little different. I do have a Tumblr, vacationimpossible.tumblr.com. It's about vacations. And every now and then I talk about YouTube, but mostly it's about travel. We touched into politics a little recently because I think it affects travel. But on Tumblr, the hashtags can have spaces so Tumblr functions a little differently. Uh, it's a little unusual how, how Tumblr handles hashtags, I find. Um, and it's easy to mix the terms up. For example, there's formal keywords as part of your metadata, but I'm even talking about have keywords in your title and your description and other things. What I'm meaning is the words that are also your keywords so that there's re repetition and alignment. Uh, you may have heard me talk about this before, what I call keyword alignment. It, there should be a word, at least one word, that exists in the title of your video, exists in the description of your video, exists as a keyword, maybe also, bonus points, hashtag in the description, and you say it out loud in the video. And then for super, super bonus points, you caption the video as well, rather than just letting, because YouTube can hear the words you say, it can auto caption, but it might not hear you right. I recently had to, well not had to, but I recently went back and, um, captioned my Ensenada video the first time I went to Ensenada, Mexico, and I went to La Bufadora. La Bufadora is, um, it's an attraction. Uh, and the auto captions <laughs> kept thinking I was talking about fedora hats or food, uh, a food fedora would often come up. And so that video didn't perform very well. And now I know that that's because when YouTube was eavesdropping on what we were saying, it never picked up that we said La Bufadora. And even though that was in the title and in the description and in the keywords, um, because we didn't correct the captioning, it didn't know we spoke uh, the word. And so that, that hamstrung us a little bit in search results and recommended. And so I corrected it recently. It might be too late though. I don't know. Um, maybe if I upload a new thumbnail, it might restart that. I don't know. But that's that's that. <laughs> uh, so that's just a little bit about, about uh, you know, uh, keywords and, and things on that front. Uh, Andre Tadusi, I'm not probably not saying that right. I'm sorry for butchering your name, but you're up next. Andre. The autocomplete wanted to put an R at the end of your name. Okay, that's a nice picture. Uh, no channel description. Uh, so that is a great opportunity because you can go in there and write just about anything and it'll improve things over now. Uh, so take some time and just go in there and talk about what's your channel about? Why do you do it? Uh, you know, bare minimum of that. Go in and, and put just a, a couple sentences as a bare minimum. Uh, is my time with you coming to a close? Nope, the marathon continues. We're keep going. Um, so raft gameplay, raft playthrough, gaming, raft the journey. These are most used tags, which is interesting. Uh, and all of the results are from your channel, uh, above the fold here in the search results, League of Leg Legends montage. So gaming, uh, something called the raft. I'm not familiar with it. looks like a game. looks like an interesting premise for a game. 
Um, so, okay, that's cool. That looks like there's some alignment there. Uh, and for your name, it's coming up as a good search term. Uh, obviously, not a lot of people just searching a name, but you own it. So that's good. I found you right away, and you're, mo you're owning the results here. You got five videos and 25 subscribers. So I'm probably not going to have a lot to say about channel layout because it's not a lot to work with. However, you do have a channel trailer, introduction video for my channel. That's cool. Uh, and you got a banner, which is a very lovely picture. If you took that picture, that's great. If you took that picture, get on Instagram now and post that and other similar pictures. If it's not yours, I would recommend at some point changing it out. Um, particularly given that you seem to be a gaming video and the banner does not, that screams travel to me or photography. It doesn't say gaming to me. So, um, yeah, uh, those, those are a couple thoughts there uh, as well. Um, there's just nothing there that tells me about your channel. Um, so, you know, you could put up something about the fact that, you know, some of the games you play or something, maybe. There's also no social links. So, like I said, if that is your picture, get on Instagram, man, and link up your Instagram. If not, see earlier in the video for my Twitter rant. Set it and forget it. Plug it in, lock down your name. Um, so, for your, uh, your channel trailer here, it says, introduction video for my channel. Those words are not super searchable. Uh... In this video, I'm talking about me and what is going to happen on this YouTube channel. And it runs 2 minutes and 17 seconds. I would... I would basically try to summarize what you actually say in the video in the description. And then looking at that, try to pick a phrase that you think would make a good title for the video. The future of gaming. Maybe. Something like that. Maybe that's what you're about. I don't know. Um, maybe it's like, you know, the best Raft and League of Legends gameplays ever. Or something like that. I don't know. Uh, so that would be better. Again, this is interesting. You've got popular channels, but it is absolutely locking on to gamers. So it seems to be variations of this popular channels theme. It makes me want to go back and look at my channel and see what mine says right now. <laughs> um, but again, adding a box that uh, I'm trying to change my channel art to Photoshop. How can I do it? I'm not sure exactly what you're asking there, Tekken. Um, so we've got, uh, you can activate a box where you, where you recommend specific channels that you control. I recommend that you do that. Um, and again, it could be the people who make Raft uh, and League of Legends, perhaps. Uh, or it could be channels you enjoy watching, people you collab with, people you want to collab with, people you look up to. Just something. Uh, turning on the feature, the algorithm says, oh, hey, this guy's really serious. He's using all of our tools. He wants to be a success. We'll help him out a little bit more, maybe. Uh, and also it shows anyone who comes by that you support whatever community you're a part of, whether it's small YouTubers or a gaming community or whatever. Uh, so you've got an upload playlist. Um, and once you have more than five videos, because right now you have five videos, so all your videos are here on display and that's fine. Uh, I would recommend um, putting some playlists and other things there, but right now is not that time. So that's a thing for the future. Uh, channel it is. If you're ever sitting down and thinking, what can I do with my time? I've got some free time. What can I do to boost my channel? Should I go caption a video? Should I make a thumbnail? Should I do X, Y, Z? The thing that will always do the best for your channel is making more videos. Um, but if you're not able to for whatever reason, you don't have the time, you don't have the inspiration, you don't have the footage to work with, that's when you can think about, you know, maybe putting the time into other things. But if you're able to put out a video, that's the best thing you can do for your channel every single time, as long as you don't do more than one a day. Gaming moments, or gaming funny moments, League of Legends Raft. As one tag. Problematic here for two reasons. One, I believe Raft and League of Legends are separate games, so people probably wouldn't search them as a thing. Like, if I'm actually going to click on it, let's see what I get. I get nothing, okay. I think, uh, I think I'm think i having a bit of a lag here. Hopefully the video is still streaming fine. Uh, social topic game content. Um, not seeing a lot of sort of social topic videos. So I think um, funny gaming moments, funny gaming moments League of Legends, funny gaming moments Raft, those would be all separate good keywords. Um, but I would not combine two games onto the same combined keyword because I don't think people will be searching that way. About page. Yeah. Oh, Romania. Cool. Uh, it's funny. I went to high school with a couple people from Romania, and one was Andrew and one was Andre. So a very popular name in Romania, I'm coming to learn. So that's cool. Um, don't see people from Romania very often in the group, but glad to have you. Uh, you got your email. That's good. Like I said, just you got to write a description there. And again, at the very least, go sign up for Twitter and plug it in. Uh, set it and forget it. Uh, it's a very um, 
It's a young channel in terms of number of video subscribers and views, but you've been on the platform since 2011. Uh, that's fine, um, but you've only been uploading videos for the last two weeks, so it is a very young channel in that sense. For two weeks of progress, you're actually doing very well, um, so that's pretty good. Uh, I don't know that I have much more at this early stage to suggest. Um, I think your League of Legends montage thumbnail, uh, the, the image itself doesn't tell me much of what it's about. It's clearly just a, a shot from the game, so I would say making a custom thumbnail there is a good idea. Um, but other than that, I think you, you've got a pretty good start. Um, also the headshot that you're using for your profile picture, like that's a professional looking picture. So, um, you know, like I said, if you're taking these sorts of pictures, get on Instagram, share them on a, a platform that would appreciate the photography side of things. Cause it looks like in, um, it looks like you have a skill there. Yeah. You know what? You know who's next? Chef, Daddy, and Daughter. I don't think I've looked at Matt's channel except long enough to get the link so I can link it to things. I'm sorry that he's not here to see this, but this is long overdue. Here we go. So he's got that avatar. That's awesome. Uh, I think you could zoom in a little bit, but I don't think you have to. Um, but it might make it pop at lower resolutions because uh, there's a lot of white space sort of above the head and off to the side of the face. So if you center it a little bit and zoom in a little bit, that'd be a little better. Um, so uh, search term is fair, but again, it's just the channel name, not a big concern. Most used tags. Matilda Ramsey. Is that like, does Gordon Ramsey have like a daughter or something who also cooks or a wife or something? I don't know, a sister, cousin, I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Food, funny video, cooking, Gordon Ramsay, fun, family, chef, daddy, chef. Okay, those those tags look good. Um, none of the videos below your channel are showing up in the search, so that's something to think about, trying to lock down um, that search term. Chef Daddy teaches his kids how to cook and appreciate food. That's a good description. Uh, it, it really hints at the why, and that's good. Um... It's interesting because it's Chef Daddy and Daughter, but it's kids plural. Maybe your family expanded after you got the channel name. I don't know. 179 subscribers, 126 videos. Uh, I think that uh, the description could be beefed up a little. Um, I'm noticing like some of the related search terms. Are you, um, you know, do you see Gordon Ramsay as an inspiration? Is it like Gordon Ramsay but with kid gloves? You know, imagine Gordon Ramsay if he was nice. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you might be able to bulk that up, but I mean, it's a pretty good start. Definitely not wasting any space in the beginning of your description, and that's good. A love story 10 years in the making. Happy Valentine's Day to my wife, Laura. Well, that's sweet. Uploaded nine months ago. Well, that's cool. I'm not sure uh, how great that works as a channel trailer, but it's interesting. The banner is... It's okay. It's a little dated in its style. Uh, it's easily read. Um, if you have an icon, I mean, you've got that that colored version of yourself. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, you know what? Maybe this would be a thing to try Talent Z for. Is get them to see about maybe see what they could come up with with a banner for you might be an idea. Uh, I'm not seeing any social links, which is interesting i mean i know you run our discord server but the discord server is not about your channel and not about cooking so i can see why you wouldn't include it um but you've probably heard my twitter rant so you know twitter dude um let's see here well and and also as as a chef uh it would make so much sense for you to be on instagram and maybe a blogging platform of some kind. Instagram, so you can show pictures of the finished product, a little behind the scenes, maybe the ingredients or something, really nice beauty shot of, I don't know, a cup of salt or I don't know, something. Uh, you know, kind of like what you've got in your background image there. Uh, I think Instagram, uh, you know, for, for you know, hashtag food porn, uh, foodies, things like that, I think could do well. So I really think um, getting on Instagram would be great for a visual standpoint. And then I think getting on a blogging platform, Tumblr, blogger blogspot uh wordpress something to post recipes 
step by step. So that could be really good. And you can basically duplicate your content to a degree in that if you put the recipe typed out on Tumblr, you can also put it in the description of the video lower down that could also help with SEO. So I think there's an opportunity there if you're not doing that. Uh, you got uploads, popular uploads. Family, chef family vlog, chef family recipes. So you got recipes. So yeah, you could be sharing those and then linking the linking your blog uh, in the social links is a good idea. And some created playlists there, which is interesting. Um, how to stop a baby from crying. That's, that could be uh, useful. 26 views in nine months. You got to think more people need that help. Oh, you worked out the, the Photoshop thing. Awesome. Uh, how to make a periscope. Cool. You got some cool video uh, ideas here. Um, recently, the names don't look super descriptive. Carving, episode five. Lost, episode four. Ball, episode three. Blink, episode two. Leaves, episode one. Okay, and there's other stuff there. So I get the sense that this is a series you're doing. This is maybe a, a vlog subset or something. From an artistic standpoint, I can understand what, sort of what you're doing. It's like it's a one-word title. And if you look at things like, uh, yeah, I would, I would change the picture of the banner as well. Uh, on, Andre, I would, I would agree with you if you're talking about uh, this one up here. Um, I made the same mistake with the titles, and that's why my YouTube didn't take off for the longest time. Is I, I was uploading in 2008, 2008. Um, and I had titles that were kind of like artistic, like, uh, I had one that was in French, uh, just cause I thought it was a cool name, but it like my one video from that era, from the early days of my YouTube was James Darren. And that's just cause I called it James Darren and it took off. It did what it said on the tin. And that's why it was really popular, possibly amongst other reasons. But I had other videos like, um, I'm trying to think of a good example of one that was poorly named. Uh, oh, in my second season, I filmed some scary looking animals at Six Flags, um, what was then called Marine World in San Francisco, and I called it the face of evil, <laughs> uh, which was cool and funny because I like basically I was filming these animals and I like, slowed down the footage and I put it to scary music to make it look like they're all plotting to kill us all. And it was kind of a gag. Um, but who is searching the face of evil on YouTube? No one. I wish I could go back in time and slap myself so that I would put a better name on it, like Scary Animals at Six Flags. If I had said that, it would have gotten some damn views, and it would be, you know, my channel would have been a lot more successful. And and for years, and also, I prefaced it with, a, like, an episode naming convention. So it would be, like, 2X02, the second episode of Season 2 of our second, our second trip. And so it was, like, 2X02, The Face of Evil. What was I thinking? I don't know. Um... And so, you know, uh, having an episode naming convention is fine. Playlists make that a little unnecessary, but it's okay. Putting it at the end, you're doing the right thing there. You could put it parenthetically, possibly even as well. But um, carving, lost, ball, blink, leaves, not super searchable. Some of them kind of are. Ball, uh, lost, not really. Much less so versus the others. So if you can just say what it does in the tin uh, on the title, then I think you'll do a lot better in search and discovery. Uh, and I know it's a, like it's not as fun uh, from an artistic standpoint. Maybe you could have like um, in the videos, uh, you could do like a graphic thing that shows what you would call the episode. Uh, and you could put it there. So like you could have like a title card that pops up. Uh, like you're watching like a, a West Wing episode. They, they'd have like a black screen and like white text would come up. And like I, I spoofed it in one of my videos called Bermuda um, because we're trying to go to Bermuda on a cruise and then a hurricane gets in the way and we get diverted and so um basically i have it's kind of funny uh, i like it it's got content id match because i used music from star trek but i'm really proud of that video because it's i think it's funny where it's like we see the cruise ship coming in because we were out um in orlando we were out uh, watching a, a, a satellite being launched and so we were out at like a crazy, it was like three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. And that's when the cruise ship started coming into port. And we got that on film, which is this great shot of our cruise ship coming in. And so we got this great, like this great music I stole from Star Trek, this orchestral, like, you know, uh, it, it's coming in and it's exciting, this building energy and everything. And it's like, yeah. And I even say in, in a video, I'm like, there's our cruise ship. That's so awesome. Right. And then it basically cuts to a news report about the hurricane. Uh, and so we cut from that and then I, I blink it out and it looks like, 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 a, like it's air, like an error or it's virus or something or 
you know, a tape is ripped or whatever. Um, and then it, it goes to like a color bar and then a black screen. And then there's this voiceover news report about the hurricane and a title card comes up and it says the disaster show. That video is not titled The Disaster Show because people wouldn't be searching for that. And if they did, this isn't what they're looking for. It's titled, the, I think, Trying to Go to Bermuda or something. In fact, as I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking that title needs work. Maybe that's the next thing I'm going to look at is my Bermuda video. You guys want to watch me tweak my Bermuda video settings? Um, and so then it cuts into the newscast and stuff, and it goes from there. Uh, another alternative thing you could do is, like, I'm a big Star Trek nerd, uh, and so... Uh, one thing that Star Trek generally does, not so much on Discovery, but on all the other series, is they put the name of the episode in text in the top left-hand corner, generally in quotation marks for some reason. Um, you could do that as a way of being like, you know, leaves, blank. Uh, and so that way you can keep sort of the artistic element of that titling, um, but still have the SEO in the text that you're using on YouTube titles. Uh, you got popular channels, but not recommended channels uh, by you. Uh, and I mean... As a moderator in Small YouTubers uh, Boost Facebook group with over 40, 49,000 uh, small YouTubers, I have trouble believing that there aren't some groups that you're uh, and some channels you're a fan of. Uh, they may or may not be on brand. Uh, if they are, that's better. But uh, I would suggest activating that box and plopping some folk in. Maybe Gordon Ramsay, if that's something that you're about. Channelytics. Uh, Chef Daddy, Cooking with Chef Daddy, Kids Cooking, Cooking Show, Cooking. I think that's all pretty good. You can put in a couple other things like Appreciating Cooking or something like that. Teaching Kids to Cook. That would probably be a really good uh, search term. Teaching Kids to Cook. I bet that has uh, some search volume to it. Uh, that might be worth uh, researching maybe with like TubeBuddy, uh, for example. Um, but that's pretty good. Uh, and again, yeah, let's get some social links up there. I ranted about that. Um, yeah, uh, teaching kids to appreciate food. That's good. I mean, you know, uh, children who are picky eaters, I was one. Mine is. It's a, it's something that parents struggle with, so uh, that could add value. Um, so that would be good. You've got some good stuff going on here. What do you guys say? Should we go and tweak my Bermuda video a little bit? What do you think? Because I need to start taking some of my own advice, I think. Yeah, still going strong. Hope you guys aren't bored of me yet. Has anyone been with us for the whole broadcast? I don't know if I should thank you or apologize. Bermuda. Let's take a look. Here it is. 138 views. Man, I put my heart and soul into that. Not one like. Not one comment. I love that video. It's 2 minutes and 55 seconds. Tube buddy, help me. And it just says Bermuda. That's probably not the best. It's and I bet you too, buddy's gonna tell me that's too short. I bet. Yep. See, under best practices, one of the things that TubeBuddy does, if you have the paid version, is it tells you if your title is too short or too long. It recommends between twenty and seventy characters, and you know it is right. Um and so I, I remember what I was trying to do. This was in May of 2016 I uploaded this. So it was before I took YouTube very seriously. And I wanted it to be a surprise for my audience. I wanted them to be like, yeah, we're going to Bermuda. And like, wait a minute, what's happening? I wanted them to have that experience of discovery. But the fact is, if only 138 people watched, then maybe those people got it. But, it, you know, no one's watching it, so no one's going to get that experience. So I need to get eyeballs on this thing. So what can I do that might be better? Um... Bermuda interrupted by hurricane? Maybe? I don't know. Um, does anyone have any suggestions on that? Um, Bermuda hurricane, maybe? It'd be a little misleading because I don't actually show footage of a hurricane. Bermuda trip interrupted by a hurricane. How about that? There you go. I mean, it's a little clickbaity with that explanation point, but it's... John, you're still with us. You're a trooper, man. You're my favorite. Okay. Uh... No one's searching my mom's name. <laughs> okay. Ray's mom joins us as we embark on a trip to Bermuda aboard the Carnival Sunshine uh, cruise ship. 
This needs some hashtags. Oh, I, I didn't put hashtags on my other one. That was a bit of a mistake. Hashtag Bermuda. Uh, hashtag Carnival Sunshine, maybe. Hashtag Hurricane, I guess. I don't know. Give it a try. Uh, okay, uh, Ray's, mom's Ray's mom joins us as we embark on a trip to Bermuda aboard the Carnival Sunshine cruise ship. Sailing out of Cape Canaveral near Orlando, they plan on three days in the port of Bermuda. Unfortunately, Hurricane Joaquin has other plans and causes the ship to be diverted, maybe? Causes a diversion. No? Has other plans. Um, I think it has other plans. That's probably fine. Cool, Andre. Glad you're still with us. All right. Uh, so that's pretty good. I could go in and add my social links. I'll do that later. Um, that would probably not be super helpful for you. And look at this. Come on, me of the past. You... I can talk about myself this way. Other people can't. You suck. <laughs> I, I only had 203 characters worth of keywords uh, out of a maximum 500. Uh, that's not great. Um, so let's see. Uh, maybe I can come up with a couple myself. Um, they should probably align with those hashtags for one thing. So I'm going to add hurricane. Um, cruise interrupted, maybe? Uh, it helps if you can spell. Yeah. Oh, wait. Hold on. Cruise interrupted. Invaded by bearded Vikings. <laughs> But you know what? <laughs> John, you're smarter than you know. Um, I should put Bermuda Cruise. I don't have that in the keywords. Watch as Ray beats himself up over past mistakes. Uh, and so, okay, TubeBuddy's got some suggestions here. Bermuda Cruise Carnival, that's probably not a bad idea. Uh, that's about it. So, But I will do Bermuda Cruise just on its own. Pauline, I had to leave in the middle of the live. I just seen that you reviewed my channel. Thank you. We'll definitely take these advices. Glad it helps. Glad that the language barrier wasn't too much to uh, prevent me from being useful. Uh, Cape Canaveral Cruise Port. Yes, we do show that. Uh, sometimes you got to click twice to make it actually take. Rocket launch. That's not this video. I don't think we got the video. We, we saw the rocket launch. I didn't get it on footage. It was... We were standing out there on the overpass on this green grassy area between the two directions on the highway and we were getting eaten to death by bugs uh and it was three in the morning we were exhausted and it started to rain and after 10 minutes i couldn't put my my mother my son and my family through this so i just called it and said okay screw it i'm sorry guys let's go back to the hotel we crossed the highway uh to the, to the side that the hotel's on we start walking back and all of a sudden i see this light reflecting in the hotel windows and i look up and i see the rocket just starting to take off uh, and it was amazing, but I didn't have time to whip out the camera. So it was a great experience, bug bites notwithstanding. Um, but I didn't film it. So, regret. Just looking through some of these suggestions. Hurricane Joaquin Bahamas. That's a good suggestion. But it wasn't about the Bahamas. We weren't trying to go to the Bahamas. We didn't go to the Bahamas. It was Bermuda. So, Hurricane... Joaquin helps if I can spell Bermuda. I'm wondering how popular search. Oh my god, I did. I cannot spell. It's the observer effect. It's because people are watching. Let's pretend. Okay. Um. Hurricane Joaquin Satellite. I do have a satellite image, weather channel. I didn't really have the rights to that. 2015, it was 2015, so maybe that. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to revive this video in all fairness, but I'm going to get put some effort in. Maybe we can all learn something by making the attempt. Maybe at least I'll just feel a little less embarrassed <laughs> by having this video in my back catalog repertoire. Carnival Cruise Ship Sunshine, yes. That's not a bad one. Is it a vlog? I don't know. Cruise line. 
Donc je vous peux mieux la... This is probably super exciting for you watching as I scroll through here. Tekken's still with us. It's awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, Bermuda Cruise. No. Bermuda Triangle. Tempted, <laughs> but I didn't talk about it at all. So We had a nice Batman joke. I got my friend in Victoria to do some voiceover work at the end of the video. This was the first video I ever asked for subscribers in. Because uh, it was part of a gag. Because I don't like asking for subscribers. So please subscribe to Small YouTubers Boost and be notified of the next live stream. Also, I'm going to be working on um, uh, tutorials, so this kind of thing, but maybe something a bit more polished that you can go back to and jump right into it rather than having to find the right moment in the middle of a three-hour live stream. Uh, so it'll be a bit more useful that way. Uh, other tags for this. Um, cruise diverted. Did I do that? No. Okay, I guess I can do cruise, but really I want to cruise diverted... Port cancelled. How about that? Maybe uh, cancelled. How about uh, still got some characters. Port cancellation. Bermuda can. Uh, that's not how you spell that. Bermuda can cancelled. Now, one thing that does happen sometimes is the character limit. You're noticing is going up and then it's going down again. Um, so I'm a little concerned that that's actually not an accurate reflection. I'm gonna try and save my changes. Yeah, you see, I'm actually over. There we go. Get it down under the 500, save those changes. Share it on Twitter. Yeah, I suppose I could, maybe not right now. Um, I would pin a comment, but there are no comments. If you wanna get your comment pinned on my video, <laughs> <laughs> Go comment on the Bermuda video, and I'll pin and heart and reply to your comment if it's nice. Ah, uh, so I can't do that right now. I can add an info card. Let's do that. Ba -ba 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 -ba, three minute video. So let's say a little over. A minute, a minute, hey, I think I see our ship. Half in is where I'll add a card. Side of this thing. Um, so this is about cruising. An appropriate card. Carnival Splendor highlights. Why the hell not? There we go. At least it's got a card. Check that box. At least I'm telling YouTube that I care. Uh, what was it that I said that I... Uh, oh, I needed hashtags. Let's go do that. Let's go add hashtags to my NASA video. And we can see if the thumbnail has since updated while we were doing other things. Come on, browser. Get it together. Are things displaying? Yeah, things are still looking like they're displaying well for you guys. That's cool. There. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I put my face right at the time code. Didn't follow my own advice. Got another view though. Uh, so thanks. <laughs> uh, edit. So I wonder if I hit create thumbnail, can I edit the existing one? Select an image, continue. Does it still have sort of the layers and stuff? It doesn't. It looks like it finalized. It flattened the image, I think. Huh, eh, that's fine. I was curious. We're all learning. Um, still showing my old one. Needs to update to this new thing. But I need hashtags. Wow, hashtags. NASA. Uh, Kennedy Space Center. And... KSC for Kennedy Space Center. There you go. Got some hashtags. Woohoo hashtags. Uh, got a little room. Let's throw in space shuttle for one more keyword. Why the heck not? Oh. So, uh, Stupid Robot Fighting Link says, I shot a helpful video for uh, YouTube's uh, channel called Creator Insider. You could upload it to here if you want. That is, that's fantastic. Sure, yeah. I mean, if, if you're fine with that, I would be happy to host that for you, put that up here. That'd be great. Um, yeah, uh, contact me uh, however you want to send it to me. Uh, whatever works. You know, OneDrive, uh, Google Drive, um, whatever. Uh, 
How's it going? It's Enz Ferrero. Cool. Um, I will get back to channel reviews. I was just doing a little work on my own channel for a second there, showing you some TubeBuddy and other YouTube things. Let's get back to the list and see who's next. I just took care of Chef Daddy and Donner. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Tekken, you're up. Time expired for your last minute changes. <laughs> Before I go in and uh, rip you apart. No, I'll be respectful as much as I can, share fair opinions, and try to be constructive rather than destructive. What's the difference? Destructive tells people that they suck. Constructive says you suck, and if you made it blue, it would be better. <laughs> That's the difference. Uh, okay, so uh, I know that Tekken is a fighting game. Uh, so that's not much more useful there uh, in terms of my personal background. So I'm looking at your logo here. You've got some what looks like Japanese writing um, with a logo in front of it on top of it. I don't know if that's a recognizable thing for Tekken or something else. Um, but looking at it as a logo, my concern is that it wouldn't be in English if as an English speaker and listener with a tiny bit of French. Um, looking at that, I would be less inclined to click on it for fear that I wouldn't be able to understand it just speaking frankly um but uh it could be recognizable as like a tekken thing or something i don't know so take that with a grain of salt uh your name comes up as a good 50 out of 100 most used tags do recorder epic 7 sonic forces that's cool yeah okay i'm seeing this second video here sonic forces is appropriate logris assassin and lotto lotto did you play the lotto <laughs> um okay 645 videos hot damn that is a lot of content you gotta be um uh oh yeah you hit in the comments thank you um you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna uh open up another tab here and we're gonna go to social blade because I want to show you something about Social Blade. I don't talk about Social Blade very much. It's a good little website. This is uh, Social Blade for Vacation Impossible. Let me just check that that's showing. It is. Uh, so Social Blade is pretty cool. Uh, it was created by a guy named Ergo, who's actually a strong supporter of the Mario Marathon. Uh, so I, I know him a little bit from there. He donates at least $1,000 to the Mario Marathon every year. Uh, I'll get a I'll just throw out a quick plug for that. What's the Mario Marathon? It's a charity that's been running for over 10 years where they play uh, Mario games on Nintendo from old to current, uh, raising money for Child's Play Charity, which is a charity that gives books, games, and other kinds of donations to children's hospitals all across the world. I've been supporting them since their second year, and I've actually been a participant live on the show for the last two years. So uh, anyways, that's my connection to Social Blade and Ergo. Ergo's a nice guy. I trust him. Uh, and so when it comes to things where like, you know, those terms and conditions, like with TubeBuddy, where it sounds like it wants a lot of access to your channel. Uh, uh, the first time I gave a third party access to my channel in that way, it was Social Blade because I trust Ergo. Uh, and I have since come to learn that it's common because that's how the API, the thing that interfaces with YouTube behind the scenes, it needs that permission to access your channel data to show you the things you need to see to do the analytics and also um for you to use like tubebuddy or talency or other tools to ch make changes to your channel i am almost out of time so i'm gonna have to wrap this up quickly uh but you uh, channels are on social blade without you signing up for social blade that's fine um you don't have to sign up i did when you do sign up it gives you a verified member checkbox it's not like verified on other social media but it looks good so i did it uh, it shows your social media things, and I have the badge of the social butterfly because of all of my social links. So, you know, go and have at least three social networks linked to your YouTube to get that on TubeBuddy. But I just want to show you guys something here on TubeBuddy because he does have this real substantial number of uploads, which is quite impressive. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Here we have it, the badge of uploading. Upload 500 or more videos to YouTube and you get that badge on Social Blade. I just want to show you guys that. So that's cool. One thing, Social Blade here, I'm noticing no channel type. So when you upload a video, you can say whether it's like a travel or a gaming or an education video or something like that, and you can set defaults. From what I'm seeing, your default should be game, uh, gaming, and you should have it on 
most of your videos, every video that is gaming. And so when you have it on like your five most recent or whatever most recent, that's when Social Blade and other things out there in the world pick up that your channel is about gaming. This is one of the ways that you tell the world, algorithms, computers, whatever, what you're about. So um, look into that and go back to your old videos. If it's about gaming, set it to gaming so you'll show up as a gaming channel. Uh, you're set, uh, your country is GB, so you're from Great Britain, I presume, and that's kind of cool. I love London, even though I know Great Britain is a lot more than just London. Uh, you created your account in February 2017, and you have 645 uploads. This is mind-blowing. Uh, so let's dive in uh, here. So your description, it starts with a link to Discord. Uh, welcome to my channel. We're playing games and making hot beats. Oh, you make music. That's cool. Um, and I'm maybe it just hasn't propagated. I bet you said you were making changes while watching, so you probably already changed this. But yeah, talk about the fact that it's about playing games and making music right at the top and move the social stuff to the end so that it shows up better in search. Sorry, I'm rushing because I need to, I need to close off the stream soon. Uh, YouTube, uh, introduction to my channel. That name I would change. Uh, and something else that actually talks about your channel. You got your banner here. Um, you got your Twitter, good on you. You got your Discord, nice. Uh, it's greatly, very visible text. It's fantastic. I would normally say something like it's not clear that you're about gaming, but because of Tekken and because of plays in the title, I think you're kind of okay there. Um, it looks like it could be centered a little better by moving the image a little up uh, in terms of its placement or the graphic design, but it's still pretty good. Um, there's no description on the channel trailer. I know channel trailers don't generally we think of as a as a video in itself that draws people. You think of it as just a trailer, but if you think of it as more than that, then that's a good thing. So SEO up your channel trailers, guys. Pokemon Go, very popular. No, there's only one video there, um, but I'm just talking about generally. People are still crazy into Pokemon Go. Uh, so there's still a real potential audience there. Um, you got some Smash Brothers Brawl, so you could be doing... Possibly you could consider doing videos about the upcoming Smash Brothers for the Switch. And that could be exciting. Look, Channelytics here. It was a logo that you found and it looked lit. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, maybe Talent Z. You can get them to design a logo for you. Um, and they could do a banner for you. It might be worth considering doing. $7.99 a month. If you use my, my link, I, I get a little bit out of that. Um, but, you know, my suggestion, if it were me, is I would sign up for like a month. I would go and order all the graphics things, get all the graphics things, and then maybe continue for more than the month if it's worthwhile, but maybe not. Because once you got it, you got it. It's not like you got to keep the monthly thing after you got the graphics. So uh, I think that might be a good idea. If you're not uh, super comfortable designing your own graphics like this guy, um, outsource it. You know, eight bucks, get graphics for life. Why not? I mean, it's eight bucks a month, but like, yeah, you get a banner and you put the banner up there for a nice long time. It could be well worth it. Uh, you don't have any channel tags, so you should put like gaming and, uh, you know, Pokemon Go and Five Nights at Freddy's and, you know, tags for the kinds of things you do. Uh, you got awesome channels, beautiful, loving it. Popular channels, but it's all gaming, so you're making good progress there. Lots of playlists, I like that. Um, yeah, uh, not a huge lot of suggestions there. Just gonna check your about page here. So yeah, you got your Discord, your Twitter. Um, if you like mobile gaming, if you like anime RPGs, if you like trap music, this channel is for you. So for that, I would suggest not repeating if you like so much. Just say if you like mobile games, comma, anime style RPGs, comma, trap music, um, then, then this channel is for you. You could actually just say, you could replace this channel with your channel name so that you have more alignment on your channel name for searchability. Uh, I'm a college student. It should probably be I'm a college student. Uh, mixing in YouTube life and college life into one. Work uh, my college side, I make music and I love doing it. It's my passion. So you're good. You're talking about the why and the passion. That's good. Um, yeah, email me. Uh, that's pretty good. I'm sorry that I'm kind of truncating this review, but I got to get out of here. Um, but anyways, yeah, I think just some of those, those little tweaks. And I think, uh, um, yeah, you've been on Social Blade a few times. One thing Social Blade is super useful is uh, it shows you at the bottom... Uh, if you lose views because of an audit, this is where you'll see things dipping into the negative. Uh, and so that is actually kind of a useful thing. If you're like, did my view count go down? When did it go down? When did I have a spike in views? Uh, or other channels, and you're helping me, I'm helping somebody else out. And they're like, 
why my channel took off for a month and I don't know why. And I'm like, well, I can narrow down. I can go into the detailed statistics and actually spot the day that you might have had a spike in subscribers or in views. So, for example, uh, in Mar March 25th of 2018, you had a spike of views. What did you do that day? Did you release a video? Did you share something to Twitter, Reddit, whatever? Uh, Facebook, what did you do that day? Where, how did you get those views? Can you replicate it? Was it a one-off rare thing that you don't control like somebody else? I don't know. So anyways, I'm going to have to bring things to a close. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate uh, your, your time. I hope you've got some value out of it. And uh, again, because I am of Vacation Impossible, your YouTube mission, should you choose to accept it, is to sign up, if you're not, for Instagram. Uh, if you are on Instagram, try taking some picture. Look at the pictures on your phone. See if there's something that's on brand for your channel. If not, go get your last thumbnail. And if you haven't put that up on Instagram, just do that. Put it up on Instagram with like eight hashtags. Make sure that your Instagram profile links to your YouTube and see what you can do with that. So that's your, your mission. If you choose to accept it, is go see what you can do on Instagram today to boost your channel. Other than that, this live stream will self-destruct in five seconds.